I know we all want this COVID thing to end, and it will. The restrictions in place now won't last forever. Smart people are figuring out how to get vaccines to everyone, but it will take a little longer. Until then, we need to recommit and finish strong. COVID won't stop spreading on its own. We have to stop spreading it. Meet with friends outside, social distance, and most of all, wear a mask. We're all in. Are you? Some people see just another local Utah sports app. Oh, wait, what? A local Utah sports app? Introducing the new KSL Sports app, powered by kslsports.com, Utah's only all-in local sports app, connecting you with all the action you love, the latest news, insider analysis, podcasts from the pros, and so much more, free, available right now, anywhere you are. Download the free KSL Sports app today from your favorite app store. At UCCU, we do mortgages fast. Seriously fast. Just use your phone or computer to fill out UCCU's super easy mortgage application. You'll receive an instant pre-approval before you start shopping. Your completed mortgage file will be underwritten by UCCU's very own in-house professionals. Like us. Seriously fast. Buying or refinancing a home has never been this easy. Seriously fast and super easy. It's what I do. It's what I do. It's what we do. We love the new apartment. The natural light is amazing. Hardwood floors. There is a bit of a clogging problem. At least Geico makes it easy to bundle our renters and car insurance. Yeah, helping us save even more. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com and the NCAA Sports app. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place. With live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions. With exclusive access. Ready to go? South point. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com and the NCAA Sports app. Right next to UVU, Wolverine Crossing is the premier award-winning student property in Orem. With renovations of nearly $5 million, Wolverine Crossing has the look and feel of luxury living, including contemporary upgrades and top-tier amenities. Wolverine Crossing supports a strong academic environment, whether you're on campus or remote. And the resident assistant program is nationally recognized, so safety and support is the top priority. Please now get half off your November rent. Wolverine Crossing, this is home. It's Utah Valley Baseball on GoUVU.com and the WAC Digital Network. Hello again. I'm Jordan Bianucci alongside my partner Ryan Pickens. Utah Valley getting set to take on Washington State in a midweek matchup here in Orem. A lovely, calm evening at the ballpark. And with that, I'll send it over to Ryan with the lineups. All right, let's take a look at the lineup first for the visiting Washington State Cougars out of the Pac-12, coming in with a record of 13-10. and 10. Center fielder Justin Vandebreak leads it off, followed by first baseman Kyle Manzardo. Jacob McKeon, the left fielder, hits in the three spot. Colin Montez will hit in the cleanup position tonight for Washington State. Jack Smith will hit at third base. Uh, Tristan Peterson, the designated hitter. Peterson, a transfer from New Mexico State. Cody Colden, the... Uh, shortstop will hit in the seventh spot. Jake Meyer, the catcher, hits eighth, and then Kyle Russell rounds out the order and bats ninth. The Cougars will be facing left-hander Cole Yokum. Yokum making his eighth appearance. He's got one start, or this is his first start of the year. He's gone six and two-thirds of an inning for Utah Valley this year. Behind the left-hander tonight in the outfield, Jeff Aarons in left field, Tavin Lords in center, Alexander Marco in right. On the infield, Kyle Coburn at third. Uh, Garrett Broussard and Mitch Morales up the middle at short and second over at first. Kate Polson behind the plate. And a good sign for Utah Valley. Jordan is to be getting Drew Sims back behind the plate as Utah Valley tries to get a midweek win here to kind of set the uh, tone for this weekend series on the road at UTRGV. Indeed, Ryan. Speaking of Sims, I was pleasantly surprised to see him in the lineup tonight. He took a foul tip off the hand. I believe it was his throwing hand this past weekend. And it did not look good, but he is back. 
behind the plate in the squat. The last team, last time these two clubs met was back in 2019 here in Orem. That was a game Utah Valley won 20 to 13, a wild one back in 2019 and we're just about ready to get underway Yoakum on the mound Justin Vandebrink the senior batting 259 leading things off he digs in the right-handed batter so Yoakum working from the stretch with the bases men empty as uh, Ryan mentioned his first start of the year first pitch a fastball swung on and fouled back first pitch at 559 p.m. so we get underway just a couple of seconds early Game time temperature, 63 degrees, some clouds in the sky, no real wind as of now. Here's a curve ball that misses down and in, and it's one and one to Vandebreak. Yoakum is coming off a difficult outing this weekend against Grand Canyon. He went one-third of an inning and gave up two runs in that one. The one-one pitch, fastball, ooh, just missed off the outside. Yoakum not a hard thrower. That fastball at 86 miles per hour. Two balls and one strike to count. Talking to Eric Matson before the ball game, he's hoping Yoakum can take him as far as he can take him. He'll let him go as long as he can. Here's a slow roller to shortstop. Broussard up with it, straightens up, and there's one away. That's the challenge of some of these midweek games is really being able to go out there, Jordan, and find... You know, you have to balance between planning ahead for Friday, and especially we're used to seeing Utah Valley play some more Tuesday uh, midweek games and not necessarily this late in the week on Wednesday, but you have to kind of think ahead a little bit, but you have to also kind of think in the present. has to be a tough kind of balance there for head coach Eric Madsen to, to find. But if you could get five innings out of Yoakum tonight, you'll be probably in a pretty good, uh, pretty good spot if you're Utah Valley. One out here, base is empty. First pitch to Kyle Manzardo, misses off the outside with a curveball. Ball one. Manzardo has been excellent this season for New Me or for uh, Washington State, rather. I was about to say New Mexico State, thinking Brian Green, head coach over there in the Cougs dugout, the former head coach down in Las Cruces. 1-0 pitch to Manzardo. A fastball comes up and in. It's 2-0. Manzardo hitting 356. He leads Washington State with seven home runs. 27 men batted in. He was a third-team All-American preseason. He's been very good against lefties, too. Lefty versus lefty matchup. 2-0 pitch to Manzardo. Takes a fastball just a bit outside, and it's 3-0. Manzardo 9 for 24. That's a 375 average against lefties on the season. The home plate umpire is Dax Upton. Jeff Clough is at first base, and Blake Jensen is the third base umpire. 3-0. The pitch from o Yoakum is a fastball up high. Walked him on four pitches. So... A man on with one out here in the top of the first. No score between Wazoo and Utah Valley. Here is Jacob McKeon, the junior, batting 400 in 40 at bats this year. A right handed batter. That's going to be a key tonight, Jordan, with Utah Valley. They've, they've struggled on the mound and really keeping games close this year when they've given up a lot of walks. And so that's going to be something to keep an eye on here. Washington State's a good enough offensive club that they'll make you pay if you give them too many walks and too many free bases. Well, Yoakum having some trouble finding the strike zone now. First pitch, curveball, misses up high, ball one to McKeon. Utah Valley coming off a series this past weekend in which they dropped three of four to Grand Canyon. The 1-0 pitch to McKeon. There's a fastball that finds the strike zone on the outer edge, knee high. And it's one and one. Well, Yoakum trying to work around the one-out walk. McKeon looking to put Wazoo ahead as Yoakum checks on the runner. Manzardo has stolen one base this season. He's only attempted to steal the one, however. The Cougs do not run a whole lot. Neither do the Wolverines. Short lead for Manzardo. The pitch to McKeon. A fastball. I say a fastball. That was a curveball that did not break. Stayed outside. Two balls and one strike. The count. Well, I'm trying to see, Ryan, where the Wolverines rank in walks this season in the WAC. In walks allowed? Yeah. And they toward the bottom per game, that is. 
at 5.45 a game. That's a lot. But the, the, the WAC, they're walking a lot of guys. So the Wolverines are just eighth in that category. Eighth most, uh, to clarify, as the ball misses down and in. Three and one now to McKeon. Well, and to a casual baseball fan, Jordan, that may not seem on the surface of things very many. That's, you know, one every other inning. But the challenge is what comes after those walks. Is it a walk, a stolen base, ball in the gap? Because then it's a difference between a run scoring or not. 3-1 challenge fastball is swung on and missed, and it's 3-2. and two. That was up in the zone. McKeon tried to connect, could not do it, so the count is full. Well, if you're going to send Manzardo, now would be perhaps the time with just one out, a 3-2 count on the hitter. Montez is on deck. Nothing to nothing our score. Top of the first. Runner stays put. Fastball misses high. Ball four. That was close, but a good call out of the strike zone. And Yoakum has walked two consecutive batters. That brings up Montez, the left-handed batter. Two men on, just one man out in the inning. The senior batting 337. He has five home runs on the year. 18 men bat at home. As the lights come on here in Orem at doTERRA Field at UCCU Ballpark on the turf, new this season. Lefty versus lefty, here it comes from Yoakum. Curveball misses outside, not close, ball one. Good stop by Sims, sliding to his left on the turf. Yoakum does, for what it's worth this season, has pitched well with runners on. Opponents are batting just 222 against the lefty with runners on base. The 1 0 pitch, a fastball, misses up high. Again, not close with it. 2 0 the count, and he's really struggling. And here comes Eric Matson, Utah Valley's head coach. And actually, here comes Beav Levitt, so this may be an injury for Yoakum, as Levitt is the Utah Valley head athletic trainer. And I'm not sure what's bothering Yoakum, but. Beave is going to take a look as Dax Upton, the home plate umpire, also heads out there. And this would not be good for Utah Valley. No one up in the bullpen. They do not want to go through a ton of guys tonight. As Ryan mentioned, just a couple of days away from a four-game series versus UTRGV. Yoakum's going to stay in the game. Couldn't even tell through the binoculars what they were checking out, but he says he's all right. I think it was, might have been something on their ha on his hand or something. He had his arm out extended, uh, so maybe something in the you know the forearm to wrist to, to to hand. Nonetheless, we'll have to see. Just because he didn't get removed now doesn't mean that injury may not linger. But Jordan, this is really with a hitter like Montez. This is where you kind of wonder if you go change up low and away, try to get something where he can push to second or or sorry pull to second or push to short. Comes with the fastball in there. He jammed him with it. So a good pitch there from Yoakum, 2-0. It's two balls and one strike as Montez just tapped it foul around home plate. Yeah, Yoakum, a big curveball, fastball guy. Again, not the big hard thrower. So, but it's an, you make an excellent point, Ryan. Something to get Montez to kind of roll over on, looking for that double play ball. Morales pulled way over at second base. A swing and a miss at a fastball at 84 miles an hour. And I think Montez was a little out in front there of the fastball. Utah Valley's going to get Carson Brown throwing in their, in their bullpen, so that might be something a sign to tell. Both of these teams have liked to kind of bullpen the game at times during those midweek games. I know that's one thing Washington State may try to do a little bit more of tonight. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Fastball up high, and the count runs full, so the... Another full count here for Yoakum. Jack Smith is on deck. Nothing to nothing our score. Runners on first and second. But just one out in the inning. The outfield deep and straight away. 3-2 pitch, fastball up and in, ball four. So after retiring the first man of the ball, that he faced in this ball game, Yoakum has walked three consecutive batters. And a big moment already early in this one. Jack Smith comes to the plate with the bases full of Cougs. Utah Valley with a 5-19 record overall. 
Washington State at 13 and 10, and that's a big improvement from a couple of years ago. As the corner first baseman Polson comes in, as Yoakum delivers a strike to Smith, it's 0 and 1. I would imagine recruiting to go play baseball in Pullman, Washington. Maybe not the uh, the easiest sell for head coach Brian Green just because of the fact that you know it's snowy and cold there a lot. Fastball's chopped through the left side. One run is in. Here comes McKeon. Aarons throws home. It's offline. Two runs are in. It's 2 to nothing. Washington State. In there with a two-RBI single is Jack Smith, his 19th. Check that, his 14th and 15th RBIs of the year. Not a real hard hit ball, just a chopper that found the 5.5 hole. So runners at first and second, two to nothing, Wazoo. Montez stayed at second as Sims did a nice job. That throw from Aaron's was offline, and Sims made a headlong dive into foul territory to keep it from going past him and into the uh, on deck area over on the first base side as Yoko misses up with ball one to Peterson the designated hitter two men on one man out two to nothing Washington State the 1-0 pitch curve ball called for a strike at the knees on the inside corner and it's one and one Well, Ryan, you mentioned it's not easy to recruit, perhaps, to Pullman, but Wazoo's 2020 signing class was ranked 29th in the nation. Really impressive. The 1-1 pitch, a swing and a high pop-up. Shallow right field, Marco coming in near the foul line, calls everybody off, makes the grab, and the runners will have to stay put. And there are two down. So a big out there for Yoakum and the Wolverines. And I know Washington State's thrown thrown some money into the uh, into some of the facilities up there as well, which is you know which is definitely one of those things that's gonna that's gonna help and and bringing in somebody you know of Brian Green's uh, kind of status throughout college baseball. And you look at what he did as an assistant at like UCLA and, and things like that. He's he's put together some some pretty good uh, um, uh, recruiting classes other places. Absolutely. We saw it here in the WAC when he was at New Mexico State as a ball. Ooh, a strike. A little below the knees. Got the call from Dax Upton. Yoakum did. Strike one to Cody Colden. Colden, a right-handed bat, hitting 307. Two homers, 22 batted in. Yoakum on top. Come set. Fastball right there. Called for strike two. Dax Upton likes to wait a second before making his strike call. So if it seems delayed, it's not it's not my fault. It's not Ryan's fault. You blame Dax Upton. He's he's it's a dramatic strike call. I like it. How tall do you think Dax Upton, the home plate umpire, is? Ryan, he's like, he has to be above six six. He's he's tall. He's like, very I tall. Mean. Two strike pitch. Fastball misses outside. Ball one. More fans filing in on a. Pleasant evening in Orem, just 63 degrees at game time. Not bad for this time of year. Some cloud cover early on. Smith at first, he singled. Montez at second, he walked. Two to nothing, Washington State. Here's a slow roller to third. Coburn charging, gloves it, throws on the run. Not in time. The speedy Cody Colden beat it out. A very nice play by Coburn, but Colden was just too fast. So an infield hit, and Colden was playing back, or Coburn, I should say, was playing back behind third base back with two outs. So it took him a little bit to get to that baseball, but he made a really nice play on it. Colden just has a lot of speed. So bases loaded again here in the top of the first for Meyer. Crowding the plate, Jake Myra Jr. hitting 211. The pitch to the right-handed batter, a fastball, swung on and missed, strike one. So a couple of hits, three walks in this inning, and 
Yoakum would do an excellent job if he could keep the damage at two runs. The one strike pitch to Meyer. Fastball, high, maybe a bit off the outside, and the count is even at one ball and one strike. Now, Colden, I mentioned the Cougs do not steal a lot of bases. Colden does. He's, he's stolen four bags this year. He's been caught four times as well. He will not be taking off here as he has a runner in front of him, obviously, but a ball in the gap, he's going to score, especially with two outs as Meyer spoils this fastball in on his hands, off and to the right. And the count is one ball and two strikes. Bases loaded, two outs, two to nothing. Washington State, we're in the top of the first inning. Yoakum set, felt, comes home. Curveball, ooh, I don't, now they're going to call a Bach? What was, a run comes in to score, and I assume they called a Bach. I'm but, just trying to figure out. I didn't see, the only thing I can think of is, did he ever come set? But the but, bases are loaded, he doesn't have to come set. So, I don't know what that was, a, what, I'm not sure exactly what Dax Upton called the Bach on, but it is a Bach. A run comes in. It's three to nothing now. That's Montez scoring. Smith to third. Colden to second. Ball misses. It's two and two. Well, that hurts if you're the Wolverines, and now you have to dig deep if you're Yoakum and Really try to limit the damage. Keep the Wolverines in this ballgame early on. Trailing three to nothing. Two more runners in scoring position. 2-2 two -two pitch to Meyer. A swing and a foul. Backing out of play. Fastball thigh high. Good pitch. Good job by Meyer to stay alive. It's two and two. Yeah, I do not know what exactly why the Bach was called there with the bases loaded. You can work out of the windup. Yoakum is in the stretch, but he doesn't have to come set, I believe. That's the only thing I can think of because it was just kind of an unusual time. Usually you'll see it on a move where they throw over to first, but hardly ever do you see it when the pitcher's intending to come home. Yeah, and like you mentioned, as a ball misses high and away, count is full with... You would if, it, if runners were on first and second, second and third. If he didn't come set, absolutely it would be a Bach, but with the bases loaded, you just don't see that very often. There was no protest from Yoakum or the Wolverines, though. Three and two. Here it comes to Meyer. Fastball missed high and away. Ball four. Bases loaded once again. The ninth man to come to bat in this inning for Washington State will be Kyle Russell, and that is going to bring out Eric Matson. We'll see if he makes a move this early or if he just wants to have a chat with his lefty who's having a tough time finding the strike zone. We mentioned Carson Brown is up in the bullpen, and he's ready, and they're going to go to him. So Yoakum, unable to get out of the first inning, gives up the three runs. Base is still loaded as Carson Brown, a right-hander, will come in for the Wolverines. We'll take a break. We'll be back after this. It's the Cougars 3, the Wolverines, nothing on the WAC Digital Network and GoUVU.com. Right next to UVU, Wolverine Crossing is a premier award-winning student property in Orem. With nearly $5 million in renovations, Wolverine Crossing has the look and feel of luxury living, including contemporary upgrades and top-tier amenities. Wolverine Crossing supports a strong academic environment, whether you're on campus or online, and the resident assistant program is nationally recognized, keeping you safe and secure. Lease right now and get $200 off your first month's rent. Wolverine Crossing, this is home. At Murdoch Hyundai, the model year in sales event starts now. The open road to adventure begins at Murdoch Hyundai. Visit Murdoch Hyundai today and get 0% interest for six years on a new 2020 Santa Fe or Sonata. You walk through our doors, you feel like family. At Murdoch Hyundai in Logan, Linden, and Murray. At Intermountain Healthcare, we understand that broken arms haven't stopped. Babies continue to be born. Emergencies continue to happen. And doctor visits are still needed. At Intermountain Healthcare, we've put the measures in place to safely care for you in these difficult times. So please, don't put off the care you need, especially for stroke-like symptoms, chest pain, difficulty breathing, or other urgent care. We're here for you. Visit IntermountainHealthcare.org slash here for you to learn how to get the care you need. 
Winter has arrived, and with it, the Murdoch All-Wheel Drive event. Be prepared for any Utah winter roads. Visit Murdoch Hyundai today and get 0% interest for five years on a new Tucson. When you walk through our doors, you feel like family. At Murdoch Hyundai in Logan, Linden, and Murray. At UCCU, we do mortgages fast. Seriously fast. Just use your phone or computer to fill out UCCU's super easy mortgage application. And buying or refinancing a home has never been this easy. Seriously fast and super easy. How does Costa Vida create the ultimate sweet pork burrito? We start by following our award-winning recipe, one that calls for everything to be made fresh, from scratch, every day. Like our beautifully braised pork, seasoned beans, savory sauces, and delicious cilantro lime rice. Even our tortillas are cooked to order. It's a difference you can taste. Treat yourself to the ultimate sweet pork burrito, only at Costa Vida. Top of the first inning as you see the mountains deep in the background here at UCCU Ballpark. New pitcher on the mound. It'll be right-hander Carson Brown taking over. He'll face the nine-hole hitter and Kyle Russell. Base is still loaded for Washington State with two outs in the top of the first. A big moment in this game. Brown trying to keep it close for Utah Valley. The pitch to Russell. Fastball at the knees. Strike one. And Ryan, Carson Brown has been really good this season. Yeah, five and two-thirds. Um, on the year, two hits, one run, four walks, five strikeouts. Utah Valley here looking for a big out. Don't know how much, how deep we'll see Carson Brown go this evening, just so that way you save him for this weekend. But um, here in a big situation early on. Swing and a miss here by Russell. Another fastball, this one at 89 miles an hour. Nothing in two to him. For Kyle Russell, this is just his tw 13th at bat of this season. He is 5 for 12, though. It's been great. Fifth game he started. The second baseman tonight for the Cougars. 0-2 here. Base is loaded. Brown out of Castle Pines, Colorado. The freshman set. Two-strike pitch. Swinging a foul tip out of the glove of Sims. That fastball caught 90 miles an hour. And it's 0-2. Yeah, Brown has been a real bright spot for a Utah Valley team that has overall struggled this year. It will be interesting to see how Eric Madsen now plays this. Now that your starter didn't go very deep into the ball game, now do you kind of you might have to have that bullpen type approach, kind of like Washington State may have, where you kind of go one guy every inning. Two strike pitches swung on and lifted into center. It jammed him. Coming in is Lords. He reaches up, makes the grab, and the inning is over. So a nice job by Carson Brown to come in and put out the fire. Three men left on two hits. Three runs for Washington State. We head to the last of the first inning. It's the Cougars three, the Wolverines, coming up. At UCCU, we do mortgages fast. Seriously fast. Just use your phone or computer to fill out UCCU's super easy mortgage application. You'll receive an instant pre-approval before you start shopping. Your completed mortgage file will be underwritten by UCCU's very own in-house professionals. Like us. Seriously fast. Buying or refinancing a home has never been this easy. Seriously fast and super easy. It's what I do. It's what I do. It's what we do. Introducing the new KSL Sports app, powered by kslsports.com, Utah's only all-in local sports app, connecting you with all the action you love. Free. Download the free KSL Sports app today from your favorite app store. Bottom of the first inning here in Orem, uh, Utah Valley coming up for the first time this uh, tonight, let's take a look at the Wolverines starting nine. Garrett Broussard leads off, followed by Mitch Morales and Alexander Marco. Cade Polson in the cleanup spot of uh, playing first base. Jeff Ahrens will hit sixth. Drew Sims will uh, hit in the sixth spot. Jeff Ahrens hits in the five spot. Uh, Payson Hayes will be the DH hitting seventh. Kyle Coburn eighth. And then Tavin Lords hits ninth. 
The Wolverines will be facing the right-hander, Duke Brotherson, on the year, making his third appearance, first start of the year. Uh, he's only thrown two and a third innings on the year, giving up five runs all earned, five walks and six strikeouts. Defensively for Washington State, McKeon's in left, Vandebrake in center, Montez in right. On the infield from third to first, we'll go pretty quick right here. Uh, Jack Smith will be at third with Cody Colden at short. Over at second, we have Kyle Russell, Kyle Manzardo at first, behind the plate, Jake Mayer, or Meyer, sorry. So Brotherton, Duke Brotherton, this is his first collegiate start, the freshman out of Mercer Island, Washington. All the infielders come in, give him a pat on the back. First pitch, a fastball, and a good-looking one right there on the outside corner called for strike one at 88 miles an hour. Broussard hitting just 194. on the year from the right side the one strike pitch to him fastball down and away ball one one and one the count to Broussard the freshman no homer six RBIs on base percentage just at 231 so he'd like to raise that as the leadoff man one one pitch coming to him fastball down and away ball two two and one Three to nothing, Washington State leading. We're in the bottom of the first inning. The tall right-hander peers in now. He winds and comes home. 2-1 pitch is swung on and chopped to third, playing back on it. Smith gloves it, throws to first, and Broussard is retired for the first out in the bottom of the first inning. And here is Morales, who's been the Wolverines' best hitter this season. Has the best average at 292. The Wolverines, as a as a team, are just hitting 179 on the season. Even stands from the right side for Morales. Brotherton comes with the fastball and it misses down and away. Ball one. The Wolverines would like to get one back here in the first, start chipping away at that three-run lead. Hey, if they can get a few more, they'll take that too. The 1-0 pitch coming to Morales. Curveball goes behind his head. Look out. Curveball looked like it just slipped out of the hand of Brotherton. pitch on the way. Fastball misses down low. And it's three and two, or excuse me, three and O oh to Mitch Morales. Alexander Marco is on deck. The Wolverines trying to right the ship after dropping three of four this weekend. To GCU, they head down to UTRGV, and this fastball is way outside, goes to the backstop. And Brotherton, for the moment, has lost the command. A four-pitch walk to Morales. So kind of a similar situation in the top of the first as Cole Yoakum had delivered, or excuse me, retired the first man he faced. Then he walked Morales, or I beg your pardon. He walked Manzardo. A lot of M's in the line. And then the, he was unable to finish that inning, giving up the three runs. Brotherton going into the stretch will look to limit the damage here. Here's Marco now. Brotherton steps off. Morales this season has stolen three bases. He's been caught twice. Leads the Wolverines in stolen bases. Held on by Manzardo. Marco still standing up there as Brotherton checks on the runner. Morales back in standing, and now another Bach has been called by Dax Upton, the home plate umpire. So I don't know if he didn't come set. He called that late. Uh, 
uh, both box have been called really pretty late. I feel like it's been like after either the throw over or after the pitch. So mm. I don't know if he's I don't know if he's thinking about it or if he's just it's a delayed call. But I think Brian Green there from that Washington State dugout maybe a little bit more of a protest than wanting at least an explanation as to what it was called. Well, you make an excellent observation. It is it has been called very late. Usually with box, as soon as it happens, you get you get a call right away, and it's not. I mean, I wouldn't say the majority of the time the home plate umpire calls it. Maybe 50-50, but first pitch curveball in the turf blocked by Meyer. 1-0 and to Marco. The senior hitting 279, three homers, 12 batted in. Does have a 547 slugging percentage. That leads the Wolverines. Utah Valley with a runner in scoring position, just one out, so it is a a big Bach call. The double play is no longer in order. Pitch to Marco. Fastball at the knees. Called for strike one. It's one and one. Fastball in the high 80s. Upper 80s for Brotherton. Now they want to switch up the sequence of the signs. Brotherton has an armband out there that he looks at. As if he's a quarterback checking the audible calls as that fastball misses outside and it's two and one to Marco. Kate Polson on deck, three to nothing, Washington State. Last of the first inning, a man on, a man out. You're going to see them change those signs a little bit more, Jordan, when there's a runner that gets out on second because they can, they can look in potentially and get the signs a little bit better. They may have up to 50 combinations or so um, that they can go through throughout the game. Curveball misses way up high, and it's 3-1 and one now to Marco. Mick McKeon over in left field. He's pulled over toward left center, so there's a lot of room should Marco pull one down the line. Some kids out on the grassy berm beyond left field hanging out along the wall out there. 3-1 pitch. Marco swings and hits one sharply to third. Backhanded by Smith. He falls down, gets up, throws out Marco. An excellent play by Jack Smith at third base, and there are two down. Marco tattooed it, but Smith able to backhand it. The ball almost looked like it played him a bit, but he stayed with it, and Marco is retired. Here is Kate Polson with two outs. Morales out there at second. He walked and took second base on a balk as Polson takes a fastball in the outside corner. Strike one. Brotherton again checking the armband the, for the signs. The one strike pitch, a swing and a foul at home plate. That fastball at 90 miles an hour, and it's quickly owned two to Polson. Polson, a senior, hitting 244, three homers, 14 batted home. In the hole, 0 and 2. A long first inning here in Orem. Three to nothing, Washington State. Time taken again. Now Brotherton peers into the dugout. Now he's ready. He'll come home. Set at the belt. The two-strike pitch, a swing and a foul. 92 miles an hour. Brotherton reaching back there, putting something extra on it. Polson stays alive. Should Polson reach, it would be Jeff Ahrens, another right-handed bat. Utah Valley, just one left-handed batter in the lineup tonight. It is Tavin Lords batting ninth. See if Brotherton comes with a curveball or stays with the fastball. 0-2. Comes with the curveball, misses high. He's has not been able to command that curveball yet in this first inning. One and two, the count to Polson. The outfield deep all the way around for Wazoo. Cougars will head up to Salt Lake City for a three-game series with the University of Utah this weekend, a conference matchup in the Pac-12. They dropped three of four to Stanford. 
this past weekend, Washington State did, as Brotherton steps off and looks back Morales. Brotherton is peering into the dugout where I assume they're giving him the sequence they want him to see, and then Meyer drops those signs. The one-two pitch. Fastball swung on and dribbled up the middle to where Russell, the second baseman, was playing behind the bag on the overshift. He throws out Polson, and the inning is over. The Wolverines get a base runner, but they strand him. We head to inning number two. It's the Cougars three, the Wolverines nothing, on the WAC Digital Network and GoUVU.com. Right next to UVU, Wolverine Crossing is a premier award-winning student property in Orem. With nearly $5 million in renovations, Wolverine Crossing has the look and feel of luxury living, including contemporary upgrades and top-tier amenities. Wolverine Crossing supports a strong academic environment, whether you're on campus or online, and the resident assistant program is nationally recognized, keeping you safe and secure. Lease right now and get $200 off your first month's rent. Wolverine Crossing, this is home. It's not always easy being the exception. to nothing Washington State as we begin the top half of the second inning. Walks and box in that first inning. Two box called. A lot of walks. I'm not even going to count them. <laughs> Carson Brown delivers the first pitch to Vandebreak. He swings and misses at a fastball. It's 0-1. Washington State sent up nine men in that first inning. So Vandebreak already his second at bat. He bounced out to shortstop. Last inning, 0-1. One strike pitch to him. Breaking ball misses down and away, and it's one and one. Well, this is not Utah Valley's starter. Carson Brown came in with the bases loaded and two outs in the first inning and was able to get Russell to fly out as fastball misses outside. It's two and one to Vandebrink. Panda break came into the ballgame batting 259. One homer, nine RBIs. A slightly open stance from the right side. 2 1 pitch is swung on and lifted into right. Marco back a couple steps. Now squares up and comes in, reaches up. One handed grab, and there is one away. So Vanda break 0 for 2 in two innings. One out, and here's Manzardo. Manzardo walked in that first inning, eventually came around to score on a two-run single by Jack Smith. Manzardo is a preseason third-team All-American, takes a breaking ball outside, ball one to him. Seven homers for Manzardo on the year. The 1-0 pitch, outside, fastball missed, it's 2-0. For Manzardo, I believe that is tied for third in the Pac-12. Brown set, comes home, fastball right there on the outside corner, taken for strike one, it's 2-1 two to Manzardo. McKeon is on deck, followed by... Montez. One out, base is empty in the last, or rather the top half of the second inning. Three to nothing, Washington State. 2-1 pitch from Brown is a fastball, swung on, spoiled, lifted high off to the left, and the count is even at 2-2. Two and two. I mentioned the last time these two teams faced each other was in 2019. The final score, 
that night. Utah Valley, 20. Washington State, 13. You mentioned, Ryan, before the game, the Wolverines pulled it out by a touchdown. Two and two, the count. Here it comes. A swing and a fly ball right at Aaron's. In left, he reaches up, makes the grab. So Manzardo, it wasn't a high fly ball, more of a soft line drive, but it carried out there. But they're quickly two away in the second inning. Yeah, that's one thing I'm interested to see tonight, Jordan, is how the ball carries. I would imagine for the first maybe hour or so, the ball's going to have a lot of carry, but it cools down pretty quick. And once, uh, I mean, once really we get into maybe uh, twilight and times like that, you may see that ball, those kind of balls with some carry on it just kind of fall. First pitch, breaking ball, misses outside to McKeon. He walked in the first inning. The game started, there was some sunshine, but completely overcast now as a lefty begins to get loose in the pen for Utah Valley. Another breaking ball. That looked like a curveball from Brown. Misses way outside, and he falls behind McKeon 2-0. I believe that's Tevin Hall, the left-hander, warming up for Utah Valley, and this is where you may see Eric Madsen maybe start going maybe one, no more than two innings at a time per reliever. 2-0 pitch, fastball right down the pipe taken for strike one it's two balls in one strike and I think that was like you mentioned Ryan kind of the idea coming into tonight was let Yoakum go as deep as he can and then just patch it together as a fastball misses down and in three and one to McKeon McKeon has one home run on the season seven RBIs he came in batting an even 400 still batting that even 400 after walking in the first 3-1 3-1 pitch from Brown. Fastball outside, not close. Two out walk. And those have hurt the Wolverines this season. Two out free passes have come back to bite Utah Valley at times. Here is Montez. He walked back in the first. A left-handed batter. Lefties, for what it's worth, are 0 for 8 this year facing Brown. McKeon with a short lead at first base. First pitch fastball right there on the outside corner, taken for strike one. Polson holding on the runner at first. Morales, the second baseman, pulled over trying to Clog up that big hole on the right side. Breaking ball down in the turf, blocked by Sims. The count is even at one and one. Well, if you were hoping for a quick ball game tonight, settle in. First inning and two-thirds. We're almost 45 minutes old. The 1-1 pitch, a swing and a ground ball through that hole on the right side. Heading to third from first is McKeon. The throw will be let through. He's in there safely. Holding at first base is Montez, a single. Marco made an excellent throw to third base, but didn't really have a shot at McKeon. Runners on the corners now with two outs, and the batter will be Jack Smith. So he's already he already has two RBIs in this game, or in the second inning, has a chance for two more here. Two men on, two men out, three to nothing. Cougars. The Cougs are in town, right? No, not those Cougs. Washington State. The pitch, fastball swung on, chopped to third. Coburn to his left, has it, goes the easy way to second. Morale is covering, and the inning is over. Washington State strands two, no runs. We go to the bottom half of the second. It's the Cougars three, the Wolverines. Nothing. At Intermountain Healthcare, we understand that broken arms haven't stopped. Babies continue to be born, emergencies continue to happen, and doctor visits are still needed. At Intermountain Healthcare, we've put the measures in place to safely care for you in these difficult times. 
So please don't put off the care you need, especially for stroke-like symptoms, chest pain, difficulty breathing, or other urgent care. We're here for you. Visit intermountainhealthcare.org slash here for you to learn how to get the care you need. The latest from KSL 5 News, including breaking news as it happens, and all your favorite KSL shows, ready to watch anytime. Download the free KSL app right now on all your favorite devices. Aaron's, Sims, and Hayes do up for Utah Valley in the bottom of the second. They trail Washington State 3 to nothing. Don't forget to stick around for our post-game show, fans. If the first inning and a half or any indication, Ryan, that'll be coming up around five and a half hours from now. The pitchers have worked very deliberately. There have been a lot of base runners. From the windup, Brotherton delivers a first pitch fastball that's down low. Ball one to Jeff Ahrens. Ahrens on the year, hitting 259. The sophomore with two big flies, five men batted home. Righty versus righty. Brotherton peers in. Now the freshman kicks and fires. Fastball catches the outside corner at 89 miles an hour, and the count is even at one and one. You and I have done that postgame show a couple of times late into the night, almost the next morning. <laughs> a couple of times here when you know, BYU has been in town and our games have gone you know, multiple hours past what we were hoping originally going into the night. The 1-1 pitch swung on and missed a fastball. It's 1-2, and two, and we don't mind a long game. It's it's a, it's the pace that matters. It's moving along. But these midweek games do run up there in time with a whole slew of pitchers out of the bullpen and changes. The 1-2 pitch swung on and foul tipped at home plate. Another fastball, that one at 92, and the count remains at one ball and two strikes. Well, you may be surprised... The last time these two teams met, the score was 20 to 15 or 20 to 13, rather. Utah Valley won. That game only went three hours and 58 minutes. You would think it would have gone a lot longer. Here it comes, the one-two pitch from Brotherton. A swing and a pop-up. First base side, foul territory. It's going to be Manzardo near the dirt. He makes the grab, and there's one away. Well, get, Ryan, get this. So the Cougars played a 10-inning in, ten game against Stanford this past weekend. They won it, the Cougs did, 10-9. to nine. That game lasted four hours and 46 minutes. So it's not like the Cougs or the Wolverines on a midweek game with conference series this weekend as Sims take a, a curveball for a strike want to be out there all night throwing a bunch of guys. But that's just what it, that's kind of the nature of the beast sometimes during the middle of the week. That was the first breaking ball we've seen Brotherton really command in this game. The 0-1 comes with a fastball. And that one looked pretty good. I don't know where that missed. Ball one to Sims, though. Well, and I think, too, Jordan, one thing, you know, with everything that's been going on with COVID and things like that, you just have gotten to the point where you'll just get a game in mm -hmm. when you know you can get one in. And, so I don't think anybody probably on this field or maybe even in the stands or watching at home really care how late this game goes as long as we get the game in. <laughs> Absolutely. The 1-1 one, one fastball swung on and missed by Sims, and it's 1-2. and two. Payson Hayes is on deck. Base is empty. One out in the bottom of the second inning. Washington State leading 3 to nothing. Duke Brotherton from the windup. He kicks and fires. Fastball misses high and away, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Well, you may be wondering, the freshman Brotherton out of Mercer Island, Washington, that's right there in the Seattle area, why didn't he go to the University of Washington? Was he recruited by UW? He was a very, he was a sought-after recruit, 2-2 two -two pitch coming. Fastball misses outside, and the count is full to Sims. Well, I don't know if this played into it, but Brotherton 
is a Coug through and through. His parents went to Washington State. Both grandparents graduated from Washington State in the 60s. Both great-grandparents graduated from Washington State in the 30s. He even had a great-grandpa, Angus Clark, graduated from Wazoo in 1927. A swing and a dribbler out in front of home plate. Throw to first by the catcher Meyer as he plucks it up. And there's two down. He gets the slow-footed Sims. And there are two away. Utah Valley did not exist in 1927, Ryan, but I heard the Yankees had a heck of a club that year. Two away. Here's Payson Hayes. No? Murderer's Row? 27 Yankees? Nothing on that, huh? <laughs> Base is empty for Hayes. Curveball swung on and missed. So Brotherton has started the last two batters with good-looking curveballs. He's thrown just 29 pitches here in the second inning, right where you want to be as a starter, about 15 pitches an inning, no more. One strike pitch to Hayes. Another curveball, this one down low, and it's one and one. Brotherton peering in, now he has what he wants, the 1-1. One, one. Fastball misses up high at 90 miles an hour, and it's two balls and one strike to Payson Hayes, sitting just 146 on the year in 41 at-bats. He does have two home runs, both those home runs solo shots. Hayes has just the two RBIs from those big flies. 2-1 count to him. Curveball down low in the turf, 3-1. So good count for Hayes, who can lean into one. No, 1927, the Yankees dominated in the American League. I can't remember how many games they won. Beat the Pirates in the World Series, the Yankees with Ruth and Gehrig. 3-1 pitch, down low, and the Wolverines have a base runner. So a nice at bat there from Pace and Hayes, a two-out walk issued. And that will bring up Kyle Coburn. I'll bet you Eric Matson, Mick Matson, Utah, they know about the 27 Yankees, big Yankee fans. Can you imagine trying to kind of pitch through that lineup and being like, okay, okay, this guy just got a, uh, hit a double off me, so, okay, now, okay, it gets easier. Nope, now it doesn't. Uh, oh, nope, now it doesn't get any easier now. You know what I mean? I mean, when you have those kind of offenses, it can becomes a very taxing night to be on the mound <laughs> as, a pitch, uh, as a pitcher. and. Taxing may not even be the no, right word. I think you taxing might, is. You right. might just might go and say, you know what, I don't know. I think I feel sick today. I don't think I can play. Yeah. I'll try again ne uh, next time. Well, exactly. Uh, I don't want, I'll pitch around Babe Ruth. Gehrig's protecting him in the order. But I don't have to worry about that guy. Here is Coburn, a right-handed batter, after Meyer heads out and has a, has a word with his starter on the mound. One man on, two men out. That ball squirts through Meyer and gets to the backstop. Payson Hayes will head to second base, and the Wolverines for the second consecutive inning have a runner in scoring position with two outs. So we'll see. that. I think that will be a pass ball. We'll see what they score it. I think that got through the legs, though, of Myers. They're going to say that's a wild pitch. So... In any event, P Hayes is at second base, the 1-0 to Coburn. Down low with the fastball, and it's 2-0 now to Kyle Coburn, the freshman hitting 375. It's a little misleading. He's had just eight at-bats this season. He is three for eight, though. He has shared time at third base with Mick Matson. Wolverine's just looking for some production from that third base position. Tavin Lords is on deck, a left-handed batter. 2-0 pitch, down low, missed with another fastball, and it's 3-0. So a good opportunity for Utah Valley, trailing by three runs. Brotherton in his stretch, struggling a bit as he peers into the dugout. Yeah, the whole system. Peers into the dugout, gets the 
sign sequence checks the wristband for that sign. Now Meyer will drop the sign. There must be a lot of sign stealing in the Pac-12. I mean, I, I don't, I don't really know who, because we don't see this a whole lot. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I know Oregon State and Pat Casey on some of those great teams. They, they had kind of used that kind of system, and and that's the reason why I know like there could be, you know, I don't know, I know one time, and I don't know for sure the the exact number, but you know, about every time they start to think, okay, it's time to change it up, and it may not even be one time through the order. It might be, you know, whenever someone gets on on a second base and. 3-0 fastball down low. He walked him on four straight pitches. So Utah Valley will have the tying run come to bat here. In the bottom of the second, it'll be Tavin Lords, another freshman, 28 at bats this season. He's had just five hits. And we're going to have a trip to the mound. That is Anthony Claggett, the pitching coach. We'll have a word with Duke Brotherton. They're, the bullpen is stirring down there, a right-hander throwing for Wazoo. You, know, you have to remember too, Jordan. Brian Green's got a deep, uh, is deep rooted in the Pac-12, having spent time at Oregon State as an assistant, up over um, UCLA as an assistant. So, I mean, there's definitely it's interesting to see how college baseball kind of shifts region to region. You know, the Pac-12, when you get up in the Pacific Northwest, the ball doesn't carry as much, so it's a little more bunting friendly. And how can you manufacture runs compared to here? In kind of the Rocky Mountain area, it's a little bit more let's open it up and let's try to drive the ball and kind of really use everything to our advantage. So it's just interesting to see how those kind of areas can shift. Well, and Brian Green, what style, what was his style at New Mexico State, man? It was let's score 25 runs, and that's hyperbolic, but they did score a lot of runs down in Las Cruces at a high altitude. Well, and those New Mexico State teams too, Jordan, had a pretty good pitching staff as well. Yeah. So, I mean, a really nice get for Washington State to go get Brian Green from Las Cruces to come up to Pullman. And, you know, the the challenging part, they may not ever be a team that hits maybe the top three or four in the Pac-12, but even if they could start getting up into, the, into those middle ranges, it would be a big step for that Washington State program. Fastball misses down and into the lefty who want to know. I know Cougar fans would want to see you know some Pac-12 championships and things like that. So hopefully that happens for him. But uh, you know it's building blocks and it takes some time to kind of build that program. But this and what is effectively Gre uh, Green's first year as COVID-19 really washed out last season as Lords takes a strike. It's one and one to him. I mean they're. 13 and 10. They're playing good ball. They are 2 and 7 in Pac-12 play, but and it like you said it takes some time. Building blocks and things look good right now for Washington State. 0 and 1 to Lords. Here it comes. I said 0 and 1 as the ball misses down and in. The count is 2 and 1. The scoreboard says 1 and 1. That is not correct. Two balls and one strike the count to Lords. But I mean Jordan to be honest with you, it would be easy to understand their record in Pac-12 play on the road against number 18, Oregon State, on the road at number 16, Arizona State, at home against number 24, Stanford. They've had to play three ranked teams to start the to start the Pac-12 season. So I, I would say they're, they might be better than that 2-7 and seven record indicates. Those are tough, tough games to go win. Brotherton steps off the rubber, looks back Hayes. Brotherton has really got to focus on this batter. Hayes isn't going anywhere. He's slow-footed. And with two outs at second, he's just waiting. Here's a swing and a high fly ball to the left field. McKeon going back on the track. It is off the base of the wall. One run will come into score. Here comes Coburn. He will score into third with a two RBI triple is Tavin Lords. It's three to two Cougars. So Lords goes the opposite way. Nearly pokes one out of here over the short porch down the left field line, just 305 feet, and that will do it for Duke Brotherton. So really a good outing for Brotherton. Gave up just the one hard-hit ball, but that will bring in the right-hander from the pen. So we'll take a break on GoUVU.com. The Wolverines with the tying run at third early on in this ballgame. It's the Cougars 3, Utah Valley Two, you're watching the WAC Digital Network.
Right next to UVU, Wolverine Crossing is a premier award-winning student property in Orem. With nearly $5 million in renovations, Wolverine Crossing has the look and feel of luxury living, including contemporary upgrades and top-tier amenities. Wolverine Crossing supports a strong academic environment, whether you're on campus or online, and the Resident Assistant Program is nationally recognized, keeping you safe and secure. Lease right now and get $200 off your first month's rent. Wolverine Crossing, this is home. At Murdoch Hyundai, the model year in sales event starts now. The open road to adventure begins at Murdoch Hyundai. Visit Murdoch Hyundai today and get 0% interest for six years on a new 2020 Santa Fe or Sonata. You walk through our doors, you feel like family. At Murdoch Hyundai in Logan, Linden, and Murray. At Intermountain Healthcare, we understand that broken arms haven't stopped. Babies continue to be born. Emergencies continue to happen. And doctor visits are still needed. At Intermountain Healthcare, we've put the measures in place to safely care for you in these difficult times. So please, don't put off the care you need, especially for stroke-like symptoms, chest pain, difficulty breathing, or other urgent care. We're here for you. Visit IntermountainHealthcare.org slash here for you to learn how to get the care you need. Winter has arrived, and with it, the Murdoch All-Wheel Drive event. Be prepared for any Utah winter roads. Visit Murdoch Hyundai today and get 0% interest for five years on a new Tucson. When you walk through our doors, you feel like family. At Murdoch Hyundai in Logan, Linden, and Murray. At UCCU, we do mortgages fast. Seriously fast. Just use your phone or computer to fill... First pitch curveball taken for a strike by Broussard. It's... 0-1, new pitcher, it's Tyler Haft for Washington State. Lords is at third base, 3-2, Cougars. The pitch to Broussard. Fastball misses outside, ball one, it's 1-1. One one. Haft on the year, making his fourth appearance. Uh, no record so far, gone four and two-thirds innings, eight runs, five, uh, sorry, eight hits, five runs, all are in three walks, five strikeouts. 1-1 one, one pitch from Haft. Fastball swung on, chopped foul, third base side, and the count is one and two. It's a good fastball at 92 miles an hour from Haft. Fastball slider changeup from Haft. One two pitch coming to Broussard. He's over one. He swings and lifts this one foul deep down the right field line, out of play. So Lords is standing at third. He doubled in, or rather tripled in, two runs off of Brotherton. For Lords, that's his fifth and sixth RBI of the season. And he's had just the nine at-bats this year. One-two pitch. Broussard takes way outside with a slider. And the county count is even at two balls and two strikes. So you noticed right away that Brian Green's strategy tonight was to go with the bullpen, as you mentioned, Ryan. Brotherton pitched pretty well, gave up just the two runs as Broussard fouls this fastball back to the screen, and it's 2-2, two and two, or I should say the count remains at 2-2. Two and two. I mean, there's multiple different ways, too, you can manage that, Jordan. You can go one time through the through the lineup and maybe hope to get, you know, an, two innings, maybe three out of a guy. You can... You know, maybe just set it, you know, at a pitch count and say we're gonna let you go, you know, fifty pitches and you're done. I mean there's a few different ways that ways that you see different coaches kind of handle these midweek games and you're gonna bullpen it. Two two pitch. Slider stays up high and it's three and two now to Broussard. A good at bat here from Garrett, the freshman, trying to get the bat going, batting below two hundred. He grounded out in his first at bat. Lords at third base. Two outs in the inning, the pitch. Broussard takes up and in. Breaking ball did not have a sharp break on it. So a walk to Broussard, that brings up Morales, and that's a mistake by Haft because Broussard has been struggling. Morales is arguably Utah Valley's best hitter this season. So runners on the corners, and Haft will try to work around that two-out bases on balls. Haft, another freshman out of Federal Way, Washington. 5'11", 190. He pitched this past weekend twice, went overall four and a third innings against Stanford. First pitch fastball way outside Morales, ball one. 
I say fastball. That was an off-speed pitch. I beg your pardon. The two outings against Stanford, one went really well, no runs. One went not really well. He gave up five earned runs. Has not pitched a whole lot this season other than this past weekend. He went just a third of an inning at Dixie State back in February. Here's a swing and a fly ball foul off and to the right. That was a fastball at 91. One ball and one strike to count to Morales. as he walked in his first plate appearance. 3-2, to two, Washington State leading Utah Valley as the sun peeks out from behind the clouds on an overcast evening in Orem. Broussard at first base. Lords at third. The 1-1. A swing and a foul hit high down the right field line. And the count is one ball and two strikes. That was a fastball. At the knees, one and two. Good sized crowd out for a midweek night. One two pitch. A swing and a chopper, foul on the third base side. Morales came into the ball game hitting 292. He had a red-hot start to the season. He's come back down to earth. Morales a junior. Out of Temecula, California. The one-two pitch coming. Haft, set, here it comes. A swing and a high fly ball deep to right field, but in the ballpark. Montez in front of the track, reaches up, makes the grab. And the inning's over. Utah Valley, though, gets two runs on one hit. They leave two stranded. We go to inning number three. It's the Cougars three, the Wolverines two. We can stand together by standing far apart. Stay six feet apart from other people. Wear your mask when you go out. Wash your hands often. If you feel sick, stay home. Be respectful of others. The choices you make are critical. By protecting yourself, it helps protect all of us. Your actions can save lives. What we do now will shape our future. Stay safe. Join the Wolverine Club, a simple message with a major impact. Finds the back of the net for the Wolverines. Support student athletes like former Utah Valley University women's soccer star, graduate, and Rhodes Scholar finalist, Hannah Bruce. Not only is Hannah the first UVU student athlete to be a Rhodes Scholar finalist, she is currently studying to earn a master's degree in neuroscience at the renowned University of Oxford in England. Support the next Wolverine Rhodes Scholar finalist by joining the Wolverine Club today. Washington State leading Utah Valley 3-2. to two. New pitcher on for the Wolverines as we are about to begin inning number three. It's Tevin Hall. This will be just his second appearance of the year. He went two innings, did not give up a run in his first outing. That, uh, that came against. I'll look who that came against, Ryan. Well, according to this, these are overall statistics. Hall has one outing, but according to the web, he has more than that. We'll sort it out. The batter will be Peterson, followed by Colden and Meyer. And it's my pleasure to give you with the play-by-play, -play, Ryan Pickens. Thank you, Jordan. As Tristan Peterson, 0 for 1 on the evening, takes the first pitch, ball low and inside. One ball and no strikes here on Tristan Peterson. It will be Peterson, Colden, and Meyer coming up. 6, 7, and 8 due up here for Washington State. The left-hander Tevin Hall comes in, and Peterson takes the 1-0 pitch outside for a ball. And it's quickly two balls and no strikes here on Tristan Peterson. He flew out to right in his only plate appearance of the evening for the Cougars. Here's the 2-0 pitch on its way home, and there's a looks like a slow curveball that settles in, 68 miles an hour, but that one's over for a strike. And it's 2-1 and one on Peterson. Ryan, some updated stats on Hall. Nine and a third innings pitched. He's given up 
five earned runs, four walks, five strikeouts. The 2-1 pitch misses low, ball three, and the count goes to three and one. I was going to say, I was pretty sure we had seen Tevin Hall a few more times than just the one appearance. <laughs> yeah, and but he did come this past week, and he had the one appearance, and he pitched well. Line shot right at Kyle Coburn, who makes the play, and there's one gone here in the four, or here in the third. As right in the right spot at the right time was Coburn, and that will bring up shortstop Cody Colden. Colden reached on a base hit. He had a, just a little kind of a dribbler down the third baseline, just beat out the throw from Kyle Coburn. Back in the plate appearance, back in the first inning, right here as. Coburn playing even with the bag at third. The first pitch misses off the plate for a ball. One ball and no strikes the count now. Continuing to see arms continue to warm up really in both teams' bullpens. At least stay loose here for each club tonight. The 1-0 pitch. This one stays high for ball two. Two balls and no strikes the count here on shortstop Cody Colden. Washington State making their their second trip here to um here to Utah here to Utah Valley the 2-0 pitch high for ball 3 three balls and no strikes here on Cody Colden these two teams have met a couple of times up in Pullman uh, in fact it's a 7 and 15 record in these two games right here between these two teams is the 3-0 pitch misses ball 4 and uh, Colden's on for the second time tonight with a walk and that brings up catcher Jake Mayer Utah Valley has made a couple of trips up here or made a couple of trips up to Pullman but this is only the second trip that I remember here at least in recent history of Washington State making a trip here to Orem Meyer the catcher to stand in walked in his first plate appearance right here working from the stretch Hall comes home and Meyer takes a fastball but this one settles in just below the belt for a called strike and the count moves to 0-1-1 ready to go from the stretch Hall checks the runner over at first here's the 0-1 pitch runner takes off the throw from Sims from his knees a good throw but not going to be in time to catch the speedy Col uh, Cody Colden so Colden steals second base. He's now in scoring position here with one out in the third inning. But Meyer now down to the count. No balls and two strikes will look to stand in. Hall trying to work through this right here. Looks in, gets the sign from Drew Sims. And the pitch on its way home. Fouled back by Meyer. We'll do it again. No balls and two strikes. Well, we've seen Colden speed early on in this one. He beat out an infield single in the first inning, and now he steals his fifth base of the year. He has some wheels. Ready to go right here, the 0-2 pitch. On its way home, and this one misses for a ball. It's one ball and two strikes right here. Washington State was picked to finish 10th in the in the Pac-12 preseason poll this year. Went 11 and 42 overall in 2019. Finishing 11th at the end of the year in the Pac-12. Ready to go right here. One ball and two strikes the count on its way here to Meyer. The pitch is going to be rolled over to third. Up with it, Coburn looks the runner back to second and throws out Meyer over at first base. And there's two away here in the third, and that brings up shortstop Kyle Russell. And for some players, there is, is an appeal to go to a program that is on the rise and have a chance to really be a part of something and build a program compared to going to an established program. Some players like the idea of maybe being able to play earlier as well, going to a program that's on the rise. As Kyle Russell stands in, flew out to center field, his first plate appearance, swings at the first pitch here and pops it up into shallow right field. Alexander Marco comes running in. He'll make the catch, and the inning is over. Washington State gets a runner on, but they strand him. We head to the bottom of the third. Utah Valley sends up Marco, Polson, and Aarons after the break. 
How does Costa Vida create the ultimate sweet pork burrito? We start by following our award-winning recipe, one that calls for everything to be made fresh from scratch every day. Like our beautifully braised pork, seasoned beans, savory sauces, and delicious cilantro lime rice. Even our tortillas are cooked to order. It's a difference you can taste. Treat yourself to the ultimate sweet pork burrito, only at Costa Vida. Predicting Utah's diverse weather, it takes an experienced team passionate about putting you in the know before you go. It takes the KSL Weather Specialists. Weather made special. Well, Alexander Marco stands in to lead off bottom of the first inning, takes a breaking ball, it settles over on the inside corner for a called strike. And it's 0-1 on the number three hitter for the Wolverines. Marco grounded out to the third baseman, Jack Smith, in his first plate appearance. Takes another curve ball. This one high and tight for a ball. And the count moves to 1-1. One and one. The middle part of the lineup for Utah Valley, this has been really where all the pop in the bats has come this year with Marco with three home runs, Kate Polson with three home runs, and then Jeff Ahrens with two as Marco fouls that one away and will do it Again, here with a one-ball, two-strike pitch coming here to Alexander Marco. Been a key part for Utah Valley. As they trail here, three-to-two three, uh, three to, two to Washington State. The pitch on its way, and Marco fouls this one off to the screen. We'll do it again. One ball and two strikes to the count here on Alexander Marco. The Wolverines with a quick turnaround. Friday they play a, a night game at UTRGV. Back into the whack for a four-game series. The one-two pitch misses off the plate with the fastball. And the count evens up. Two balls and two strikes on Alexander Marco. Ready to go. Haft comes home. The pitch. Marco grounds this one over to short. Up with it. Colden. He'll fire across the diamond in time. And he'll get Alexander Marco. One gone here in the third for Cade Polson. The Wolverines coming into tonight... When you talk about the WAC baseball standings, Utah Valley just by winning percentage with about a game up over Tarleton and Northern Colorado. Right now, the Wolverines trying to catch Seattle, who have played about, have played about three, maybe four less WAC games so far. Cade Polson takes the first pitch fastball off the plate. Maybe a little low for ball one. One ball and no strikes. But UTRGV sitting at five and seven in whack play. Utah Valley at three and nine. As Polson grounds this one in the hole again, Colden up with it. He'll throw across the diamond and gets Cade Polson. There's two away here in the third. I bring that up because Utah Valley with a chance to potentially maybe at least get a if they can get a split out of that series, or while well, they really need at least three to gain some ground on UTRGV, but. There's still plenty of season to go for the Wolverines to try to catch the Vaqueros and try to maybe move up to a little bit higher in those wax standings. That one's fouled away down the left field line. No balls and a strike to count. Is really moving up throughout any kind of uh, position for the for the WAC tournament in May would be important for the Wolverines. The 0-1 pitch right on the corner for a ball, and the count evens up 1-1. One one. Coming into tonight, the Wolverines would be in the sixth spot and would have to most likely play the number three seeded team, which right now would be New Mexico State. California Baptist in first as Aaron swings and misses, and it's one and two. But California Baptist not eligible for the WAC tournament in baseball. So Sacramento State, the number two team, would have the number two seed. Grand Canyon the three, New Mexico State the four. As that one's rolled foul. Well, for Utah Valley, there's really just one series coming up this season, or 
the rest of the year that you go, well, the, that might be a tough one. against, And that's against uh, Cal Baptist. As the 1-2 pitch called strike three, a late strike call. Nonetheless, Aaron's rung up, and the inning is over. Utah Valley goes down in order. We head to the fourth. Washington State 3, Utah Valley 2. We're coming back after the break. I love this view. I love that every time this commercial airs, I get to drink another Mountain Dew. UCCU is both a credit union and a full-service mortgage company. Which means that UCCU always provides the lowest rates and lower insurance premiums than other lenders. When your mortgage rate and insurance premium are lower, your monthly payment is also lower. It's just science. That's more money you can put into your home. Or back into your pocket. So if you're thinking about buying or refinancing a home, talk to us. The credit union that's been putting people over profits for over 60 years. It's what I do. It's what I do. It's what we do. Let me tell you something, Mean Gene. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to leave it all on the mat because that's what I do when I get it done so I can do it. Yeah! I'm on a new level. I'm on a new level. Give your head a Mountain Dew kickstart. Top of the fourth inning right here as the top of the lineup coming up here for Washington State. And the first pitch misses to Justin Vandebreek. And it's 1-0 here on the Washington State leadoff hitter. Vandebreek 0 for 2 in the ball game, grounded out and has flown out to right. Here's the 1-0 pitch on its way from Hall. There's a soft ground ball up the middle. Broussard gets there, has to hurry. Bang, bang, play. Got him at first base. That was a pretty close play. A good job by Garrett Broussard to get there and make a throw. But really with how soft that ball was hit, it almost went in favor there of Justin Vandebreek. In fact, if he doesn't hit it as far out, if he comes maybe a couple of feet short on that, he might he probably has a leadoff base hit. But now that's going to bring up Kyle Manzardo. Luckily for the Wolverines, just enough roll there to try to get it to go through. The pitch to Manzardo misses low. And inside for a ball. One ball and no strikes to count. Manzardo walked in the first and then flew out to left in his second uh, sorry, his second at bat back in the second inning. Hall ready to go, working from the stretch here. Pitch on its way. Fastball settles in on the inside or on the outside corner. And the count moves to one and one. Tevin Hall has got an inning plus tonight. No hits, only one one walk. This is only the sixth batter Hall's faced, but giving head coach Eric Madsen some valuable outs here. Manzardo pulls that one through the right side for a base hit. Manzardo's aboard here in the fourth. That was just well positioned between Cade Polson and Mitch Morales, and now with one gone, it will bring up Jacob McKeon, the left fielder. McKeon doesn't have an official by bat tonight. He's walked and both both plate appearance and came around to score right here. Washington State wearing the crimson tops and gray pants tonight. Utah Valley in the home white uniforms. Ready to come home the first pitch to McKeon. That one misses low and outside for a ball and it moves the count to 1-0. McKeon has done a nice job getting on base in this ball game. But McKeon so far on the year, what the, you talk so much about batting average and how important batting average can be. The 1-0 pitch on its way to McKeon. He pulls this one foul down the line. But every sabermetric guy and woman just cringed at that statement. <laughs> but the reason why I say that is when you look at McKeon's on-base percentage, it is over 490 coming in. And so the sabermetrics people are going to love that yeah, right there. <laughs> exactly. So they're going to love me but hate me at the end of the day. But they're, they're going, They're going. wait a minute, Ryan. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent point, Ryan. <laughs> the 1-1 one, one pitch on its way home. McKeon fouls it back. But that's the thing. When you talk about your number three hitter, 
hitting that well, but then finding ways to get on base, that's really going to open up a lot of things for this Washington State offense. Well, you look at, sorry, Ryan, go ahead. You, you look at that lineup at the bottom, and you can see that the, the table has been set for them. Look at those RBI number, numbers. The one-two pitch on its way. McKeon grounds this one to third. Coburn goes to second for one. Morales on the turn to first. Not in time. Cade Polson was backpedaling off the diamond. The Wolverines thought they had it, but a close play at first. This time will favor Washington State as McKeon reaches. And that was going to be a, a tough turn. It had to be almost a perfect turn, and the Wolverines turned it almost perfect, just not quick enough there to get the speedy McKeon, and that brings up right fielder Colin Montez. Jackson Otis, the right-hander, throwing in the Utah Valley bullpen. First pitch to Montez, fastball off the plate. 1-0. Washington State has a left-hander, I believe, starting to throw. If not, starting to kind of just get loose down there. Right here, here's the 1-0 pitch. Hall takes a look over at first. And the slow curveball settles in for a called strike, and it evens the count up a 1-1. One one. Well, I'll tell you what, Ryan. I, I have a suggestion for the rest of Division One baseball. Get some unis and some numbers like Washington State. You can see them. They're big. Down there it is uh, number 22, Will Sierra, getting loose. Right there is the 1-1 pitch. Misses off the plate for a ball. And it's two balls and a strike here on Montez. You may remember this, but it was probably oh five years ago or so. So you may not. Who knows? It was here. Chicago State was visiting Utah Valley. On a Sunday afternoon, they wore these camouflage jerseys with these, you know, green numbers against the camo as that one swung on and fouled back. Cal moves to two and two. I remember being up here in the booth with you, and you're like, I wonder who's um, coming up to pinch hit and having to see it through the binoculars <laughs> to try to make it out right there. And In battle, they would have been great. In a baseball game, not so much. Two balls and two strikes the count right here on Colin Montez. Runner over at first base. And the pitch on its way home as that one swung out and missed. A big strikeout there from Tevin Hall. And that ends the inning. The first strikeout of the ball game for Hall. We move to the bottom of the fourth inning. The Wolverines try to tie it coming up in the bottom of the fourth inning. Join the Wolverine Club. A simple message with a major impact. Support student-athletes like former Utah Valley University men's basketball star, graduate, and 13-year pro basketball veteran, Ryan Toulson. Oh. Ryan is the basketball program's all-time leading scorer and holds seven UVU career records. Support the next professional basketball athlete by joining the Wolverine Club today. Get the breaking news, weather, and traffic you need to know before you go. Wake up to real stories from real people. The news specialists on KSL Today. Mornings made special. I love this view. I love that every time this commercial airs. I got to drink another Mountain Dew. <sighs> Bottom of the fourth inning starting here at UCCU Ballpark. As Drew Sims stands in to lead it off, he swings the first pitch, makes contact, puts it in a shallow right field, coming over the second baseman who bobbles it but pulls it in on the fly. Kyle Russell makes the play, and there's one gone here in the fourth. I wasn't sure if, if anybody was going to get to that one initially off the bat. Kyle Russell got to it, then lost it for a second, but was able to recollect it. And with one gone, it brings up Pace and Hayes. Ryan Pickens and Jordan Bianucci here with you at UCCU Ballpark in Orem for a nice Wednesday night contest between Washington State and Utah Valley. A 3-2 lead for the visiting Cougars. 
as Payson Hayes stands in, walked in his first plate appearance. Takes a fastball above the belt for ball one. One ball and no strikes here on Payson Hayes. Hafed ready to go with the 1-0 pitch, and Hayes grounds this one to second. Kyle Russell's got it again, throws to first in time, and there's quickly two away. So the Wolverines' last inning tested Cody Colden. This inning testing so far Kyle Russell. So far the Cougars' middle infield passing the defensive test tonight as third baseman Kyle Coburn comes to the plate. Coburn walked and came around to score a run back in his last plate appearance. First pitch on its way to Coburn. Fastball sits just off the plate for ball one. One ball and no strikes the count. Washington State has left seven base runners on the base paths tonight. Utah Valley only three. Haft comes home. Coburn grounds the third, or just a short. Up with it, Colden. He'll throw out Kyle Coburn. And Tyler Haft has gone three innings, not allowed a hit so far. Washington State leading 3-2. to two. We head to the fifth after the break on the WAC Digital Network. Some people see just another local Utah sports app. Oh, wait, what? A local Utah sports app? Introducing the new KSL Sports app, powered by kslsports.com, Utah's only all-in local sports app, connecting you with all the action you love, the latest news, insider analysis, podcasts from the pros, and so much more, free, available right now, anywhere you are. Download the free KSL Sports app today from your favorite app store. At UCCU, we do mortgages fast. Seriously fast. Just use your phone or computer to fill out UCCU's super easy mortgage application. And buying or refinancing a home has never been this easy. Seriously fast and super easy. Top of the fifth inning here at UCCU Ballpark. New pitcher on for the Wolverines, number 27, Jackson Otis comes in. Otis on the year 0-2 with making his 7th appearance. Has one save on the year. Gone 9 and 2 thirds innings for the Wolverines. He'll take over and he'll get ready to face the 5, 6, and 7 hitters. Smith, Peterson, and Colden. And right now, Jordan, you have to be happy with the innings that Tevin Hall gave you. But now Jackson Otis a big responsibility to try to keep this out of one run game. And with the play by play is Jordan Benucci. Thank you, Ryan. Otis will try to retire Washington State in order for the first time tonight. The Cougs have had a base runner on in every inning. And you mentioned uh, Taven Hall. Taven Hall did pitch well, went two innings, did not give up a run, just one hit. So here is Jack Smith, who knocked in a couple runs back in the first inning. The Cougars came up with a three spot in the first. They have not scored since then. Otis, the right-hander, working from the stretch with the bases empty. First pitch fastball is down low. Ball one. Otis out of Las Vegas, a transfer from Salt Lake Community College. Pitched this past weekend against Grand Canyon, the 1-0 pitch. Fastball misses down low again, and it's 2-0. and He went three innings, gave up two runs, but he pitched well in that outing. As another lefty begins to get loose, a lefty started this game for Utah Valley. Yoakum could not get through the first as this fastball misses outside. Now it's 3-0. and Otis is going to have to come in to Smith. Three-two game. The three-zero pitch, fastball right there for a called strike one. He took something off of it at 84 miles an hour. Three and one to Smith on the year. 
Jack Smith came into the ball game, a senior batting 309. Fastball misses down and in. He walked the leadoff man. So not a good start for Otis. And here comes Justin Peterson. I say Justin Tristan, I beg your pardon. Peterson, a senior, came into the game batting 280. He peers into the dugout to see what sign is put on by Brian Green. Tonight, Peterson is 0 for 2. Otis set at the belt. Now he comes home, breaking ball, called for a strike, and he is ahead of Peterson 0 and 1. Peterson lined out to third base in his last bat. Colden on deck. Four hits in this game for Washington State. Three runs, no errors. The pitch, a swing and a chopper foul on the third base side off the screen of the Wolverines' third base dugout, and it's nothing and two. Another breaking ball in on the hands of Peterson there. The light's beginning to take effect here in Utah Valley. A cool, calm evening. Two-strike pitch on the way. Here it comes. Fastball chopped to third. This could be two. Coburn plays the short hop, goes to second for one. Morales to first. He got two, a double play. Five, four, three. An excellent job by Coburn to knock that short hop down. Not even knock it down. Come up with it, rather. And Morales with an excellent turn. And just like that, the bases are empty, and there are two gone. So, Cody Coden, the junior, with a 3.07 average coming into the ball game, He has reached base twice, once on an infield single, once on a walk. He shows bunt, and he bunts it right back to Otis. Otis is going to have to hurry a bit. Colton is fast. His throw is low, but Polson digs it out, and the inning is over. So Jackson Otis does a nice job working around that leadoff walk. No runs, nobody left, no hits for the Cougars. We go to the last of the fifth. It's 3-2, to two, Washington State. It's not always easy being the exception. Some people see just another local Utah sports app. Oh, wait, what? A local Utah sports app? Introducing the new KSL sports app, powered by kslsports.com. Utah's only all-in local sports app, connecting you with all the action you love. The latest news, insider analysis, podcasts from the pros, and so much more. Free. Available right now, anywhere you are. Download the free KSL sports app today from your favorite app store. Three to two, Washington State leading Utah Valley as we head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. It'll be Lords, Broussard, and Morales. Nine, one, and two do up for the Wolverines. Lords, a left handed batter. The pitch from Haiti bounces one, or rather, bunts one back to Haft. Has it throw, tosses it to first, rather, on the run. Just like that on one pitch. A, not a great bunt there by Tavin Lords, who had hit a triple in his last at bat off the wall. I wanted to see him swing the bat. A bunt, one out, and here is Broussard. Well, for the Wolverines, Haft came into this ball game in the th second inning as Broussard takes a ball outside. He walked the first man he faced. That was Haft, or that was Broussard rather, back in the second. Since then, he's retired the last eight Wolverines he's faced. 
the 1-0 pitch, a swing and a chopper foul on the third base side. 91 mile an hour fastball. It's 1-1 one one to the Wolverines right-handed hitting shortstop. Broussard bounced out in the first inning, so he officially is 0-1 with that walk in the second. 1-1 one one pitch. Fastball down low. And the count is 2-1. So the Wolverines would like to get Haft back into that stretch. See if they can break this rhythm. The 2-1 offering. Fastball down and away, misses, and it's 3-1 and one now to Broussard. Broussard does not have a home run this season. He has six RBIs. Came in into the ballgame, batting 194. 3-1 pitch to him. A swing and a liner up the middle base hit to the left of the second base bag. And Broussard is on with... One out, and Utah Valley finally has that base runner, the first one since the second inning. We're in the bottom of the fifth. So here's Morales. That tying run at first base for Utah Valley, just their second hit of the ball game. The other hit I mentioned came off the bat of Lords. It was a two-run triple. So the Wolverines have at least been economical with their hits tonight. Manzardo holding on the runner at first. Russell, the second baseman, shaded up the middle. So a huge hole on that right side as the right-handed hitting Morales takes a ball outside. Off-speed pitch missed. Want to know the count. Morales is 0 for 1 with a walk. Even stance, bent at the knees. No, one homer on the year, nine RBIs. Throw over to first, Broussard back in diving. Broussard has not attempted to steal a base this season. Haft set, the 1-0 pitch coming. Fastball swung on, foul back and out of play, and the count is even at 1-1. One one. Runners are, or batters are actually faring worse against Haft with runners on as opposed to facing him with the bases empty this season. The 1-1 pitch, Morales swings at a breaking ball and flies it into right. Coming in is Montez. He reaches up, makes the one-handed grab. Morales is retired for the second out of the inning. And here is Marco Broussard still at first base. Well, the Utah Valley bullpen has been excellent. They have put up zeros on the board since the Cougars' three-run first inning. Utah Valley's offense has to get going. Trailing 3-2 to two with a man at first base, two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. The pitch to Marco. Nope. Rather a throw over to first. Broussard back in diving. Marco tonight is 0 for 2. He has bounced out twice, once to third, once to shortstop. A lot of ground balls tonight from the Wolverines. But they've almost all of them have been hit right at somebody. Shaded up the middle again, the second baseman Russell playing just to the right of the second base bag out there near the edge of the outfield grass. A swing and a miss here at a fastball. Nothing and one the count to Marco. Marco came into the ball game batting 279, three home runs, 12 RBIs. Does have a 547 slugging percentage. Trying to keep the line moving here. Perhaps with a big fly, give the Wolverines a lead. Here's a sharply hit ground ball foul on the third base side, and it's nothing in two. Another breaking ball in on the hands of Marco. He was out in front. Now some traffic trickling down University Parkway beyond center and right field. As the headlights come on, the lights taking full effect here at UCCU Ballpark. The 0-2 pitch, swing and a foul back to the backstop. 
Another off-speed pitch that Marco just got a piece of. Count remains at 0-2. Haft, the freshman, peers in. Meyer drops the sign. Now Haft comes set away from his body. Checks the runner at first over his shoulder. The 0-2 pitch, a swing and a slow two-hopper to third base. Smith has it, sidearm across the diamond, gets the speedy Marco by a step, and the inning is over. Utah Valley wastes a one-out single. They leave him on the base paths, no runs. We go to inning number six. It's Washington State three, Utah Valley two. At Intermountain Healthcare, we understand that broken arms haven't stopped. Babies continue to be born. Emergencies continue to happen and doctor visits are still needed. At Intermountain Healthcare, we've put the measures in place to safely care for you in these difficult times. So please, don't put off the care you need, especially for stroke-like symptoms, chest pain, difficulty breathing, or other urgent care. We're here for you. Visit intermountainhealthcare.org slash here for you to learn how to get the care you need. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com and the NCAA Sports app. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. Ready to go? It's out the front. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com and the NCAA Sports app. Introducing the new KSL Sports app, powered by KSLSports.com, Utah's only all-in local sports app, connecting you with all the action you love. Free. Download the free KSL Sports app today from your favorite app store. Meyer, Russell, and Vandebreak, 8-9-1 and one due up for Washington State here in the Sixth inning, they lead Utah Valley 3-2. to two. Jackson Otis back out on the mound for the Wolverines, his second inning of work. First pitch, fastball inside, ball one to Meyer. Jake Meyer is 0-for-1 tonight with a walk. Well, the Wolverines in the first inning really struggled. 1-0 pitch, down and in, 2-0. They walked three batters. I should say Cole Yoakum, who started the game, had a rough first inning. Walked three batters, gave up a two-run single. Since then, the Washington State offense has not done a whole lot. 2-0 pitch. Fastball. Ooh, maybe a bit outside. That looked pretty good from up here. Ball three, though, says home plate umpire Dax Upton. Otis walked the leadoff man in his first inning of relief last inning, but he got a double play ball. And then a ground out. 3-0 pitch, fastball right there on the inside corner at 86 miles an hour, called for strike one. Three and one, the count of Meyer. Jake Meyer in 71 at bats this year. He's batting 211 coming into the game. Two big flies, 15 RBIs on the year. Righty versus righty, 3-1 pitch. Fastball missed up high, and Otis again walks the leadoff man. So here's Russell. Russell has popped up and flied out. Long, said long brown hair, you just have the, the gator on. The tall right-handed batter, the long locks flowing out of the back of the batting helmet. Otis comes home. Breaking ball, misses up and in. Ball one. Coburn even with the bag at third. The middle infield for the Wolverines. Double play depth. Medium deep and straight away in the outfield. 1-0 pitch. Fastball on the outside corner taken for strike one. 1-1 one and one the count to Russell. 3-2. to two, Utah Valley trailing Washington State. The Wolverines dropped three of four to Grand Canyon this past weekend. Looking to get back on track here on a Wednesday night. Non-conference Pac-12 foe in town. Otis checks on the runner. Meyer back in diving. 
Meyer has not attempted to steal a base this season. He has a short lead held on by Polson. The 1-1 pitch, rather, has popped up. Foul territory, first base side. Polson giving chase. He is going to run out of room. That one beyond the first base dugout and into the storage area. One ball and two strikes the count to Kyle Russell, a freshman. Russell this year has had just 12 at-bats coming into the game. He is now 5 for 14 this season. 1-2 pitch to him. A swing and another pop-up foul. First base side onto the rooftop. That extends a bit over the grandstand, maybe the first five or six rows of the grandstand here at UCCU Ballpark. All the seating below us on the concourse level. The one-two pitch. Otis again checks on the runner. Throw over back safely. The Wolverines shared this ballpark for quite a few years with the rookie league Orem Owls. The Owls moved to Greeley, the Greeley area, I believe, in Colorado this offseason. Here's a pop-up, shallow right field. Marco racing in. He will get there. And racing back to first base is Meyer, one away in the inning. Well, with the Owls leaving, this is exclusively... Utah Valley's ballpark again. They have the new filled turf that they installed last season. Did not get to use it. The Wolverines did not play a home game in the COVID-shortened 2019 season. So back to the top of the order. Here is Vandebrake. Justin Vandebrake, a senior, takes a strike. He's looking for his first hit of the night. This is the first time that Vandebrake has not let off an inning. He's the true leadoff man, let off the second as well, let off the fourth as well. Has a man at first. Again, Otis throws over. That is Meyer. He walked to begin this inning. A beautiful Backdrop here in Orem with the Wasatch Mountains towering beyond left and center field. Swing and a miss here out in front of the breaking ball was Vandebreak. Nothing and two the count to the right-handed batter who came into the ball game batting 259. Now this is an important at bat. Otis would surely love to get a double play ball with the big bat Manzardo on deck. 0-2. The pitch. Fastball missed up high. Trying to get Vandebreak to chase there. A little too high, though. One and two the count. Pulls in holding on the runner. The one-two pitch coming from Otis. Here it is. Breaking ball stays high, and the count is even at two and two. That's not a great one-two pitch. That's an easy take up around the letters for... Vandebreak, the center fielder, hitting from the right side. Manzardo, who has seven home runs on the season, looms on deck. 2-2 pitch. Fastball swung on, fouled back to the screen. It's a good fastball and a good swing by Vandebreak. Excellent fastball from Otis in on the hands. I don't know how Vandebreak got a piece of that. The count remains at 2-2. Two Otis on top, throws over to first again just to keep Meyer close. I don't think he thinks Meyer's going to take off, but definitely trying to keep him close over there. Two and two, here's the pitch. Down in the turf, blocked by Sims, and we go full. Well, Vandebreak should see something good to hit here. 
because Otis does not want to put another man on base with Manzardo on deck, a big left-handed hitter. Payoff pitch coming. Fastball swung on, lined into right field right at Marco, though. He has it. He's going to throw back to first, but back in there standing is Meyer, as Polson did a good job just to knock that throw down. That was not a good throw from Marco. And Polson knocked it down with his glove. It caromed toward the pitcher's mound where Otis picked it up. So two down. And Manzardo will come to bat. Washington State leading the Wolverines 3-2. to two. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Manzardo tonight is one for two with a walk. He scored in that Wazoo first inning in which they scored three runs. Manzardo on the year, seven homers, 27 men batted home. 356 coming into the ball game. The pitch to him. Slider on the inside corner taken for strike one. Otis peers in, Sims gives him the sign. The one strike pitch on the way, here it comes. Slider in there for a called strike two at the knees on the inside corner and it's nothing in two. Two Manzardo. Morales pulled over at second base trying to clog up that giant hole on the right side with Polson holding on the runner and the left handed bat at the plate. So Otis with an 0-2 count does not have to throw a strike here. Wants to tempt Manzardo. Here's the pitch. Fastball came in, and he left it up. That one swung on and lifted high into right, very deep. It is gone. 0-2 pitch from Otis, middle in. Sims wanted it low and away. And Manzardo did not miss it. His eighth home run of the year. It is 5-2, Washington State. It's 28th and 29th RBI of the season for Manzardo. You cannot make a mistake like that to a big hitter. Kyle Manzardo hits those mistakes out of the ballpark like he did just there. That was a towering shot. First pitch to McKeon is in there for a called strike on the outside corner. Sims wanted that ball low and away, 0-2, and... I'm not sure. I think it was a breaking ball. I think. I could be wrong about that. Either way, it was middle in for the left-handed hitter. And he clobbered it. Ball misses here. It's 1-1 one and one to McKeon. So the Wolverines trailing by three here in the sixth. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Down and away. Gets to the backstop. 2-1. and one. McKeon has walked twice and reached on a fielder's choice. Back in the fourth, he hit into what could have been a double play ball, but McKeon just beat it out. 2-1 pitch for Modus. Fastball swung on and missed. It's 2-2. Two and two. In the bottom half of this inning, Utah Valley will have Poulsen, Aarons, and Sims 4, 5, and 6 do up. Now we've talked about this throughout the season, but when you don't score a lot of, a lot of runs... You're putting a lot of pressure on the offense. Here is strike three called a fastball. Caught McKeon looking, and the inning is over. However, the Cougars tack on three more thanks to a, or two more rather, thanks to a Manzaro two-run home run. They lead it 5-2 to two as we head to the last of the sixth on GoUVU.com. Join the Wolverine Club, a simple message with a major impact. Ghana's first winter game skeleton. Support student athletes like former Utah Valley University track star, graduate, and current Olympian Akwasi Frimpong. Yes, South Korea, here I come. Akwasi was the first person to represent his nation of Ghana at the Winter Olympics in the skeleton. Support the next UVU Olympian by joining the Wolverine Club today.
you something mean, Gene. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna leave it all on the mat. Cause that's what I do when I get it done so I can do it. Yeah! I'm on a new level. I'm on a new level. Give your head a Mountain Dew Kickstart. New pitcher on for Washington State. It is Ethan Ross, a left-hander. As the Wolverines trail Wazoo three two, or excuse me, they trail the Cougs five to two. Here in the bottom of the sixth, Ethan Ross, a lefty out of El Centro, California, went to Southwest High School. Six feet two inches tall, 198 pounds. The Wolverines will just be glad to see Tyler Haft out of the ball game. He was excellent. We'll get the final numbers on him in just a moment. For Hafe, or excuse me, for Ross this season, this will be his fifth appearance. He has a 1.59 earned run average. Five and two-thirds innings pitched. Ten walks, six strikeouts. Opponents are hitting 111 against the lefty. So he's had problems with the command at times. Ross has good stuff, though. He will face Polson, Aarons, and Sims, all right-handed batters. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning, Ross from the windup. He kicks and fires. Fastball at 92 miles an hour. Misses down low for ball one. Well, I mentioned how good Haft was in relief. He went three and a third, gave up just one hit, one walk, no runs. The 1-0 pitch to Polson. A swing and a foul, back and out of play. Another fastball. And it's one and one. Polson is over two tonight. A couple of ground outs. Washington State adds to their lead in the top half of this inning, thanks to a two-run home run off the bat of Kyle Manzardo. Fastball misses way up high, and it's two and one to Polson. Polson comes into the ball game batting 244, three homers, 14 men batted home. Well, not much action on the out-of-town scoreboard tonight. The Wolverines, the only whack team in play. A swing and another foul back to the screen. Another fastball from Ross. It's 2-2. Two and two. And I believe Wazoo's the only Pac-12 team playing tonight as well. I'm not sure why this game was scheduled for a Wednesday and not a Tuesday. 2-2 two -two pitch on the way. Most Games midweek come on a Tuesday as a breaking ball misses high and wide to Polson. Three and two the count. Three two pitch. A swing and a foul back. Another fastball that Polson was just a little late on. We've seen the fastball so far from Ross and then he has I believe a change up we'll see what he comes with here 3-2 pitch swung on and missed Polson chased a fastball that was outside out of the zone and the Wolverines have one out in the inning here's Jeff Aarons with the bases empty Lefty versus righty, Aarons takes a hack at the first pitch, a fastball, fouled off down the right field line, and it's 0-1. Aarons 0-2 tonight, he is fouled out and struck out. Both at bats facing Haved, who came in relief of Duke Brotherton, who started this game, couldn't quite get through the second inning. The one-strike pitch, fastball misses high and outside, and it's 1-1 one one to Aarons. The 1-1 pitch from Ross, swing and a miss. Aaron's really late on the fastball. I say a miss. He fouled, tipped that one into the glove of Meyer. Well, Hayf, or excuse me, Ross, this season, righties are just 1 for 12 against him. Lefties are just 1 for 6. 
The one-two pitch, swing and a miss. Chase the high fastball. And the second consecutive strikeout for Ross. Two away in the bottom of the sixth inning. And here is Drew Sims. The Utah Valley offense has been fairly anemic tonight. A big triple off the bat of Tavin Lords back in the second inning. Other than that, the Wolverines have not had an extra base hit. In fact, they've had just one other hit. It's been a single. They've had some base runners thanks to some walks, but not a whole lot doing offensively for Utah Valley. There's a strike on the outside corner to Sims. Sims 0 for 2. One strike pitch, a swing and a foul. That fastball in there at 93 miles an hour, so the Wolverines are falling behind against Ross. It's hard not to do. He is just pouring strikes in there. 0 and 2 to Sims. Here's the pitch. A fastball fouled off. Sims, a nice job just spoiling that one. The Wolverines really late on these low 90s to mid 90s fastballs. Sims with that back foot on the back line of the batter's box, bent at the knees. Another 0 2 pitch from Ethan Ross. Here it is. Fastball, strike three called right on the inside corner. And Ross comes in and strikes out the side. We head to inning number seven. It's Washington State 5, Utah Valley 2 on GoUVU.com. We love the new apartment. The natural light is amazing. Hardwood floors. There is a bit of a clogging problem. At least Geico makes it easy to bundle our renters and car insurance. Yeah, helping us save even more. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. It's not always easy being the exception. from KSL 5 News, including breaking news as it happens, and all your favorite KSL shows ready to watch anytime. Download the free KSL app right now on all your favorite devices. New pitcher on for Utah Valley, it's Blake Zeleny, the left-hander on the year Zeleny's numbers look like this. This will be his sixth appearance. He has a 5.68 earned run average. He has thrown five, or excuse me, six and a third innings, walked seven, struck out four. Opponents are hitting 273 off of him. But Blake is coming off an excellent outing this past weekend. He went through two innings against Grand Canyon, no runs, no walks, just one hit. So he will look to continue that successful trend here in the seventh as. Montez comes to bat. Smith in the on deck circle, then Peterson due up third for Wazoo. They lead the Wolverines five to two. And with the play by play, here is Ryan Pickens. Thank you, Jordan. First pitch on its way and a swinging strike coming there. And it's no balls and a strike on the Washington State leadoff hitter. As we play here at top of the seventh inning, 5-2 lead here for the Cougars. Well, Ryan, we're hoping your your pen that you're keeping score with has some runs in it. Well, I mean, I can see some black ink spots still, but uh, we'll see as right here as Colin Montez, the right fielder. One for two this evening for Montez, a single in the second to go along with a strikeout and a walk as he stands in. And Montez swings and... Hits that one high and deep, but it's hooking well foul. And it will stay one ball and two strikes here on Montez. 5-2 lead for Washington State on top of Utah Valley. As 
I kind of wondered if this would be more of an offensive kind of slugfest, and this has turned into kind of not really a, I don't want to say a pitcher's duel, but only seven hits combined between both teams. Utah Valley with two, Washington State with five of those hits as the one-two pitch misses high and outside for a ball, and it evens the count up at two balls and two strikes. Tristan Peterson, or sorry, Jack Smith, and then Tristan Peterson do up in the seventh. The 2-2 pitch from Zeleny inside corner called strike three. A big first strike out there from Blake Zeleny, and there's one gone here in the fifth. Well, I mentioned, Ryan, that he's coming off an excellent outing against Grand Canyon. Two innings, no runs, just one hit. After at, he, would, he was coming off a rough outing, I should say, at Northern Colorado, and he really got back on track this weekend. Jack Smith stands in with one gone, takes a first pitch. It appears to be like a breaking ball, curveball in there for a called strike at 69 miles an hour. Ready to go once again. Zeleny comes in the pitch right on the corner again, but this time not able to get the call. Drew Sims has done a nice job of framing some pitches tonight. Actually has stolen some strikes for the Wolverines. Not able to steal one there. The 1-1 pitch about ready to come home to Jack Smith. He swings and pops this one up. Sims gives it a look, but he runs out of room, and it's one ball and two strikes. Now, we were just happy to see Drew Sims back in the lineup tonight. On Friday night, he took a foul tip off the hand and had to come out of the ball game and forced a couple of freshmen into the starting position behind the plate this past weekend, but Sims is... That hand hasn't seemed to bother him tonight at all. One ball and one strike to count. Drew Sims, throughout his Utah Valley career, as that one's fouled away, we'll do it again. Really, he's been in a tough spot. He's, especially the last couple of years, I don't remember it so much as freshman uh, and maybe even, well, I guess his sophomore year a little bit. He has a tendency to take some foul tips off the glove or off the hand or something like that as that one swung on by Smith, hit well out to left center field. Now Aarons comes in a few steps and makes the catch for the second out of the inning. That one there kind of, I don't know if it died on Sim, or on Aarons or if he just kind of overran it initially, but he was able to make a last second adjustment, and there's two gone. Here's Tristan Peterson. Peterson 0 for 3, a fly out, a line out, and grounded into a double play on the night for Washington State. Ready to go. Zeleny takes a look in to Peterson. The first pitch low for a ball. One ball and no strikes here on Peterson. Right here is one of the highlights here in the state of Utah tonight. Jordan, Jazz, and Suns. To the, I think they're the top two teams in the Western Conference playing tonight. The 1-0 pitch uh, missing for a ball. Two balls and no strikes. Is that what has this crowd buzzing right now, Ryan? I don't know, but uh, it should be a good one as the 2-0 pitch. Peterson rolls this one to first. Cade Poulsen's played some basketball in his day, and there he gets the out at first base, and the inning is over. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning here in Orem. It's time to stand and stretch. We'll see if Utah Valley can get some runs after the break here on the WAC Digital Network. At UCCU, we do mortgages fast. Seriously fast. Just use your phone or computer to fill out UCCU's super easy mortgage application. You'll receive an instant pre-approval before you start shopping. Your completed mortgage file will be underwritten by UCCU's very own in-house professionals. Like us. Seriously fast. Buying or refinancing a home has never been this easy. Seriously fast and super easy. It's what I do. It's what I do. It's what we do. Introducing the new KSL Sports app, powered by kslsports.com, Utah's only all-in local sports app, connecting you with all the action you love. Free. Download the free KSL Sports app today from your favorite app store.
bottom of the seventh inning. We got a new pitcher on the mound for Washington State. It's going to be Caden Calber, number 13, coming in to pitch right here. Calber will get his numbers and stats here with Jordan. Thank you, Ryan. Calber with a 4.50 earned run average. This will be his 11th appearance for the Cougars. He leads Wazoo in appearances now. He's thrown just eight innings in those 10 appearances. He's given up four earned runs, nine walks, 10 strikeouts. Opponents are batting 290 off the tall right-hander. The Wolverines have really struggled to get some runs tonight. Cavalier, the 6'7", that's right, 6 feet 7 inches tall, 185-pound redshirt sophomore out of Pasco, Washington. So the 7, 8, 9 hitters do up for Utah Valley. Payson Hayes, Kyle Coburn, and Tavin Lords. And right now, Utah Valley may just be happy. A new pitcher's on, on the mound after Ethan Ross struck out the side in the uh, bottom of the sixth inning. Utah Valley looking to try to see if they can get some offense going. The Wolverines just two for 20 at the plate tonight. Well, be careful what you wish for because I said the exact same thing when Ross came into the ball game. They said, well, they just may be happy to see Haft out of the ball game. Not this, so. <laughs> this Washington State pitching staff has been really tough on Utah Valley as Payson Hayes stands in from the right side and the pitch on its way. Hayes takes the first pitch fastball off the plate for ball one. Payson Hayes has walked and scored a run back in the two-run second for the Wolverines. Also is grounded out to second base back in the fourth inning. A 5-2 lead for Washington State on top of Utah Valley. Here's the 1-0 pitch on its way to Hayes. He swings through it, and I think it might have been maybe foul-tipped or at least came out of the catcher's glove there for Meyer. And it's one ball and one strike. Hayes has had one of the better at-bats of this game, and it came back in the second inning, and it was just a walk. He battled to a 3-2 count. Other than that, I mentioned, Ryan, the Wolverines have, you mentioned two for 20, one single and then the big triple off of Lord's bat. They have not done a whole lot offensively tonight. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Hayes, a slider that gets in there just above the knees for a strike. And it's one ball and two strikes to count here on Payson Hayes. Again, it was the bottom part of the order, kind of like we saw towards the end of the series against uh, Grand Canyon. The one-two pitch, Hayes chases a slider low and outside for strike three, and there's one away. That's the fourth straight Wolverine to go down on strikes. And here's third baseman Kyle Coburn. But it, late in that series against Grand Canyon, it was Coburn and the bottom part of the Utah Valley lineup that really got things started, including Trey Newman, who was down there. And now tonight, like once again, that two runs coming back in the second, it was the seven, eight, nine hitters that were really kind of getting stuff going. As Lord, or sorry, not Lords, Coburn stands in in the first pitch, a fastball, like just gets below the belt for a called strike. And so on one. Kyle Coburn walked in the second, grounded out in the fourth. Here with one gun. Ready to go. Working from the stretch. And that one's in there for an o, for a strike two, no balls and two strikes. Calber on the mound, number 13 for Washington State. Working from the stretch here with one gone, bottom of the seventh inning. Utah Valley looking to get some late inning heroics today. The 0-2 pitch, again, it looked to be the slider, and swinging and missing was Kyle Coburn for strike three, and there's two gone in the seventh inning, and that brings up Tavin Lords. Lords one for two, had a triple that just nearly missed getting out of the ballpark back in the second inning, went off the wall, and Lords was able to hustle into third for an RBI opposite field triple, and then also grounded out back to the pitcher back in the fifth inning. Calber ready to go right here. Ready to go, and the first pitch on its way home from Calber. Lords swings and sends this one. Foul down into the Utah Valley bullpen where it appears of maybe a right-hander starting to throw down there. I don't know if that might be Devin Smith. but It is indeed. Good call, partner. You start to get to this point in the season and you start to kind of just kind of get in a rhythm and an idea here. You know, game number four for me this year, or game number five, sorry, 
It's uh, I'm sitting in a pretty good spot over here. Lords a one hopper, a nice play. Russell knocked it down. He's going to have to hurry. He won't get Lords at first. And Utah Valley with a two out base runner. That ball was hit hard and took kind of a tough hop on Russell at the last minute. But Russell, I think, had initially made the play or at least fielded it, but then he wasn't able to come up with it. And so we'll have to wait and see here for the time being, though. Lords is on with two outs in the inning. And we go back to the top of the lineup in Garrett Broussard. That's going to be an, it looks like it's going to be an E4 right there, an error against Kyle Russell. And now it's going to bring up Garrett Broussard. Broussard a hard base hit back in the fifth inning that went straight back up the middle into center field. Looking to try to continue that plate appearance here in the pitch. Gets over for a called strike. And it's 0-1 right here. Kind of a kind of a sidearm kind of delivery that's kind of hiding, I feel like, that off-speed pitch a little bit until that breaks at the last minute. I think that's what's getting some of these Wolverine hitters out in front right here. Definitely kind of a tough motion from Caden uh, Calber on the mound. Here's the 0-1 pitch. On its way home, Broussard, ground ball through the right side, base hit. Lords is going to go from second, try to get to third, puts on the brakes at the last minute as a rocket came in from Colin Montez in right field. And Utah Valley now with runners on at first and second with two outs here in the inning, and that's going to bring up Mitch Morales. Well, you said it, Montez with a rocket coming in. I thought when I – Tavon Lords can run, and when he was stopped at second base, I thought, what? you got to take third on that, don't you? And then I saw the throw, and I knew exactly why he stopped. A very smart decision by third base coach David Carter in that third base coach's box to quickly go, you know what, Tavin, uh, second's good for now. Yeah, don't get thrown out of third. Here's the pitch to Mitch Morales. Again, that backdoor slider gets in there for a called strike to Morales. Morales flew out twice to right field and walked back in the first inning. He was advanced to second on a balk call. Uh, back and we had two box in the first inning I want to say one on Utah Valley one on Washington State and I don't know if I've seen two box in an, in an inning they'll try the uh, pickoff throw to first but diving back as Broussard is thought there for a minute that one may have made contact with Morales but it misses him for a ball and it's one and one well opportunities have been tough to come by tonight for Utah Valley they've left just four on but the tying run at the plate here in the late innings and here in the seventh if you could at least get one it at least kind of keeps that lead a little bit closer kind of inches a little bit closer to that lead the pitch to Morales there is I think he was potentially trying to hold up but couldn't and he swings through at one ball and two strikes yeah he was fooled by the breaking ball there and I think that that goes to your point Ryan he didn't recognize that was a breaking ball for a very long time. Runners on at first and second. Two gone, bottom of the seventh inning. Morales at the plate, the one-two pitch. Swings and misses, chases a pitch out of the zone, and the inning is over. Calber gets all three outs via the strikeout. The last six recorded via strikeout for Washington State. We head to the eighth. 5-2 Cougars here on the WAC Digital Network. Right next to UVU, Wolverine Crossing is a premier award-winning student property in Orem. With nearly $5 million in renovations, Wolverine Crossing has the look and feel of luxury living, including contemporary upgrades and top-tier amenities. Wolverine Crossing supports a strong academic environment, whether you're on campus or online, and the resident assistant program is nationally recognized, keeping you safe and secure. Lease right now and get $200 off your first month's rent. Wolverine Crossing, this is home. It's not always easy being the exception.
top of the eighth inning here in Orem at UCCU Ballpark at doTERRA Field here on the campus of Utah Valley University. Night has fallen here. As you can kind of see off in the distance, cars coming down University Parkway towards I-15. And we have a new pitcher from just up I-15 in Lehigh, right-hander Devin Smith. Smith on the year, making his eighth appearance. Uh, no record so far for the right-hander who's uh, has gone 11 innings, allowed 11 hits, 10 runs all earned, nine walks and 17 strikeouts. As it will be Cody Colden, Jake Mayer, or sorry, Jake Meyer, and Kyle Russell coming up seven, eight, nine, and with the play-by-play -play is Jordan Benucci. Jordan, thank you, Ryan. So Devin Smith, the freshman, just trying to keep the Wolverines in this game. They trail Washington State five to two. First pitch. Colden takes down low a fastball at 92 miles an hour. Ball one. The sixth pitcher of the night for Utah Valley. A staff night. The 1-0. Ooh, it came in and it hit his right hand. A fastball at 91 miles an hour. It got Colden. He looks to be all right. But a hit batsman. And that's how this inning gets started. That'll bring up Meyer with a man on. Nobody out. The tough part with being hit up there in the wrist, Jordan, that's sometimes when you don't really feel it necessarily until the next morning. So luckily Washington State has gets an off day and then they'll get ready to play um, I think on Friday against Utah. But right here, this may be a situation where we may see a, like a pinch runner or something come in at least uh, maybe to you know just get them off the field a little bit early I don't know in a three-run ball game you might not see it but uh, you don't want to risk that injury heading into conference into a conference series fastball misses down low to Meyer ball one yeah what was weird about it was that it was a 91 mile an hour fastball and you could hear it either hit the wrist like you said or his hand and I thought it was his hand because he was shaking it but never seemed to really be bothered by it that is a good poker player that looked like it hurt the pitch to Meyer, a swing and a liner down the right field line, slicing foul. One and one, the count. So we've seen Devin Smith has a good fastball. He's had a couple of rough outings this season. I shouldn't say rough outings. He's had one rough outing, and that came this past weekend. He went a third of an inning and gave up two runs. Other than that, he's been pretty solid for a freshman. Bunt shown by Meyer. He pulls it back, takes a fastball that misses down and away and it's two and one a very fast runner at first in Colden the bottom of the order trying to make something happen here for the Cougs in the late innings top of the eighth five to two Washington State here's a bunt back to the mound Smith's gonna have one play it's the first and he throws it in the turf and Paulson can't dig it out so just a bad throw by Devin Smith Paulson unable to bail him out, and now there are two men on with nobody out. So a hit batsman and an error. And you know, Jordan, the tough part is, I mean, a three-run ball game in the late innings, you really don't you're – you're down three runs. More runs just kind of puts you in a little bit tougher spot. Three is relatively manageable. I mean, it's not ideal. It's never ideal to be trailing in a ball game, but – it's at least manageable where you can collect, you know, two or three hits and get a run. You know, maybe someone goes deep. I mean, but you start getting three, four, five down late in the ball game. It starts to become tougher and tougher when you're only dealing with six outs. To get almost one run for every out can be kind of uh, can be very challenging and tricky. <laughs> Indeed, it can be. Here is here is triplet. I laugh, be, or I say triplet is out getting loose in the pen as Eric Matson has a meeting on the mound. I laugh because tonight especially with how the way the Cougs have pitched, you feel like three runs is a lot. Uh, and it is. So anything more than this would be, as Ryan put it, very tough to come back from. And we just haven't seen Utah Valley defensively turn a lot of double plays. And so it kind of gets tough. And really with the nine-hole hitter at the plate with nobody out, you kind of wonder if Brian Green may not play a little more West Coast-style baseball, move the runner over with a sacrifice bunch, or and just try to see if they can then just get a sack fly to get maybe a run or two across. I mean, you know, well, wouldn't be surprising. 
No, and here comes the pitch. He shows bunt, and he bunts it back to Smith. Smith could have put two. He goes to third for one. That he'll get just the lead runner, but an excellent play by Smith. Not a good bunt by Russell. And Smith smartly takes the lead runner. So with one out, runners on first and second, not a productive out. And kind of, you know, not a bad idea there from uh, from Washington State. You just had the pitcher that made a kind of a, a tough throw. So not a bad idea necessarily to go back and see if that's maybe still lingering in his, in his head. But Devin Smith, a nice job to be col- to collect himself, make a good throw to third there to get the lead runner. So here's Van to break, top of the order, ground ball, foul down the third baseline. Well, the Wolverines, we mentioned how tough it is to come back. When they're trailing after seven innings this season, they are 0-16. So they have not been a comeback type of team. The 0-1 coming to Vandebrake, who's 0-4 tonight, digging in from the right side. Two men on, one man out in the eighth inning, 5-2. Cougs. One strike pitch. Fastball missed up, and the count is even at one and one. The big bat, Manzardo, is on deck, so Devin Smith would love a double play ball here. Manzardo homered in his last at bat. 1-1 one, one pitch, a swing and a pop-up in the infield. We'll see if they call the infield fly rule. They do. Catching it anyway is Coburn on the third base side, on the grass, two away. Well, Manzardo came to the plate in the fifth inning with his team leading three to two. Jackson Otis, the reliever, got out ahead 0-2 and then left an 0-2 pitch middle in and Manzardo did not miss it. He crushed it over the right field wall, a two-run home run, his eighth of the year. Here's a fastball from Smith. Gets by Sims. The runner will attempt to go to third. The throw down. He's out at third. So not good base running there by Meyer being really aggressive, but that ball did not get away from Sims all that far. So the Wolverines do and do do indeed keep the lead at three runs. Five to two, Washington State leads it as we head to the bottom of the eighth. At Intermountain Healthcare, we understand that broken arms haven't stopped. Babies continue to be born, emergencies continue to happen, and doctor visits are still needed. At Intermountain Healthcare, we've put the measures in place to safely care for you in these difficult times. So please, don't put off the care you need, especially for stroke-like symptoms, chest pain, difficulty breathing, or other urgent care. We're here for you. Visit IntermountainHealthcare.org slash here for you to learn how to get the care you need. The latest from KSL 5 News, including breaking news as it happens, and all your favorite KSL shows, ready to watch anytime. Download the free KSL app right now on all your favorite devices. Bottom of the eighth inning here in Orem at the UC, at DoTerra Field at UCCU Ballpark, a 5-2 lead for Washington State. The Cougars will make a pitching change as Connor Barson will come in. Barson making his 11th appearance, has one start on the year with a 4.50 ERA. He's gone 10 innings, allowed 13 hits, six runs, five earned, eight walks, and 16 strikeouts. The right-hander is going to get the three, four, and five hitters with Marco, Polson, and Aarons. This is kind of the power part of this Utah Valley lineup, Jordan. And if there's a part of the lineup that can maybe get something going, trailing by three runs, this is probably the group you want up. But it doesn't look like it's going to be too easy against Barson. 
No, it does not as Marco comes to bat. The Wolverines caught a break and they took advantage of it in the top half of this inning as Barrison working from the windup peers in. The pitch to Marco, a swing and a foul back, a fastball knee high. The end of this inning, or excuse me, the top half of this inning, Washington State had two on with two out when Manzardo, their big bat, was coming to bat. And a ball skipped away from Sims. Meyer tried to take third on the, well, it would have been a wild pitch, but he didn't make it as Marco swings and misses, and it's 0-2. He was thrown out, and you never want to make the third out at third base, especially when your stud hitter is at the plate. That was a, uh, they gave the Wolverines the, a gift, and Sims really took advantage of it by making a nice play and throwing him out. Swing and a miss. Three pitches from Barrison, and Marco is down on strikes. Well, the tough part, too, Jordan, the ball there in the top of the eighth inning, it wasn't like it was really that far away from, from Drew Sims. I mean, I, I kind of like you said, I it just – the good good news for Washington State, you had a three run lead when you when you did that, but let's say it's a one run ball game at this point. That could have been a kind of a turning point. You had a chance to get Manzardo up there with runners on base and runners in scoring position. Well it's, that's a tough out. Swing and a foul tip by Polson, another fastball at ninety two from Barrison. And you want to applaud Meyer's aggressiveness on the base pads, but in that situation, I think you may have just either misread that pitch that got away from Sims, thought it was farther away than it actually was, but it just, yeah, not a great play with Kyle Manzardo at bat there. But they do have the three-run lead, and Barrison is throwing well, at least the first first four pitches we've seen from him. Here's a swing and a ground ball to short. Should be routine for Colden. Throws across the diamond. He throws it wild past Manzardo. Heading to second is Paulson. He dives in ahead of the throw. It had caromed back off the sidewall to Manzardo. And the Wolverines catch a break. That will be an E6. I don't know what happened. Colden just airmailed it. And so that will bring up Aaron's, and all of a sudden the Wolverines have a little bit of life. Put Barrison in the stretch after he was looking dominant. He peers into the dugout to get the sequencing. He has another wristband on as well. Checks it now. Meyer checks his wristband. <laughs> And we're ready to go. Jeff Aaron steps in. Checks on the runner. Barrison comes home. Slider misses down and away. Ball one. Three fastballs it looked like to Marco. Marco swung and missed at all three of them. And then he got Polson to ground out on the first pitch, but Colden, with a throwing error, puts Polson at second base. One out in the inning. The 1-0 from Barrison. A swing and a foul back. Late on that fastball, and the count is even at one ball and one strike. And, you know, Jordan, I get the idea of going up there and being aggressive and looking for first pitch fastballs. And for Utah Valley, it just seems like it's either there's there's not a lot of middle ground between going up there and swinging first pitch trying to hit or we're going to sit here and work the count. There's nothing kind of in the middle. We're seeing Utah Valley be very aggressive and, and really kind of starting to chase a little bit, I think maybe because of that, being a little maybe overly aggressive at the plate. Here's a swing at a breaking ball and low in the zone, and Aaron's foul, tops one foul on the third base side. It's one and two. They are being, indeed, they are being <laughs> aggressive up there, and we've seen that from the Wolverines. It's kind of their M.O. at the plate from what we've seen this year, a swing and a foul at home plate. Aaron's just getting a... Barely a piece of that breaking ball low in the zone. The count remains at one and two. Barrison with that fastball slider change. We've seen the, the slider, and it's pretty good. You know, well, Washington State, their pitchers go with a runner at second. They go to the dugout. Their pitcher looks at the dugout every time after every single pitch. The one-two to Aaron's, a swing and a miss here. And Aaron's is down on strikes, two away. And it's just... That is being hyper-paranoid. Ch to change the sequence after every single pitch. <laughs> I mean, I can understand if 
the Wolverines had a reputation for stealing signs. They do not. <laughs> I would understand if Paulson was trying to give location. He is not. Here's the pitch to Sims. A swing and a liner over the head of Russell and into right center field. Paulson will dig around third. He will score. It is a 5-3 to three game. Well, there you go. Utah Valley talking about being aggressive early on in the count. Sims got a fastball he liked. He punched it the other way. A nice job by Drew Sims to finally the Wolverines cash in in some regard with a two-out base hit. I take back everything I said, Jordan. <laughs> it, it worked there. That's right. Sixth RBI for Sims on the year. That will bring Hayes to bat. Well, Hayes has the ability to tie it with one swing of the bat. It's just connecting for Payson Hayes. The pitch from Barrison. A swing and a slow ground ball. Charging is Colden. He barehands it, throws to first. Safe at first base. A nice play by Colden, but that ball was just hit too slowly. Hayes is not a fast runner, but he hustled up the line and beat it out. So that brings up Coburn. The tying run at first base in the form of Hayes as Sims moves to second. And Barrison again will look into the dugout for the, what I'd call, I guess, the indicator, the sign to which he'll get the signs from Meyer. Coburn, a right-handed batter, 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. First time facing Barrison, obviously. The pitch. Swing and a miss out in front of the slider. Two men on, two men out. 5 to 3, Cougars. Barrison stares down at that wristband, and he can't get on the same page as. Meyer, now he looks back to the dugout, back to the wristband. Now back to Myers. Sims at second, he singled in a run. Hayes at first, he reached on an infield single. The one strike pitch, Coburn takes down and away, a good take there. That was the slider that the Wolverines have had a tough time laying off in this inning, and Coburn lays off of it. Coburn this season has had just 10 at bats, including tonight. Three hits, a check swing on a off-speed pitch up in the zone, and he foul, fouls it back to the backstop, and it's one and two. The tying run at first base in pace and haze. Not a fast runner, but if Coburn can put one in the gap, with two outs, he could perhaps score the pitch from Barrison. Swing and a ground ball to third. Smith has it. He'll step on the third base bag with two feet, and the inning is over. Utah Valley gets back one run. They strand two. We go to the ninth. It is Washington State five, Utah Valley three. We can stand together by standing far apart. Stay six feet apart from other people. Wear your mask when you go out. Wash your hands, often. If you feel sick, stay home. Be respectful of others. The choices you make are critical. By protecting yourself, it helps protect all of us. Your actions can save lives. What we do now will shape our future. Stay, stay safe. safe. Join the Wolverine Club, a simple message with a major impact. Finds the back of the net for the Wolverines. Support student athletes like former Utah Valley University women's soccer star, graduate, and Rhodes Scholar finalist, Hannah Bruce. Not only is Hannah the first UVU student athlete to be a Rhodes Scholar finalist, she is currently studying to earn a master's degree in neuroscience at the renowned University of Oxford in England. Support the next Wolverine Rhodes Scholar finalist by joining the Wolverine Club today.
Five to three, Washington State leading Utah Valley as we head to inning number nine. The Wolverines with a good chance in the bottom of the eighth to score some runs. They put up one. Now on the mound, we have a pitching change for the Wolverines. Yeah, they'll go to the right-hander, Spencer Triplett. He's 0-2 on the year, has three saves for the Wolverines. Um, he's gone 12 innings so far, allowed 15 hits. The right-hander, though, opponents are are hitting just above 300 against Triplett, but he's been the guy, kind of the back-end kind of closer, so to speak, and this kind of lets you know, I think Jordan, Eric Madsen's willing to try to keep this a two-run ball game. The good news for the Wolverines is if they can keep it to a two-run ball game, you have the top of your lineup. Or sorry, you have 9-1-2 and two coming up. So you're going to have an opportunity to get some guys who can get on base and get into that middle part of the part of the lineup. But the first things first, Jordan, you need a three-up, three-down kind of inning right here from Spencer Triplett. You absolutely do. So to lead things off is the biggest test, most likely. It is... Jake, or excuse me, it is Kyle Manzardo, who was left in the batter's box when Jake Meyer was thrown out at third base trying to steal on what what appeared to him, I think, looked to be a wild pitch, but didn't get all that far from Drew Sims, who threw him out. First pitch fastball misses outside, ball one to the left-handed hitting Manzardo. That's how the top of the eighth ended. We're in the top of the ninth now. Triplet, fastball swung on, one hopper right off the chest of Polson. He races to the bag, gets there before Manzardo does. A nice play by Polson, sacrificing his body to keep that one in the infield. And there's one down, a big first out. That'll bring up Jacob McKeon. Junior came into the ballgame batting 400 since then. McKeon has walked twice, reached on the fielder's choice, and struck out. the seventh pitcher of the night for the Wolverines. McKean, a right-handed batter. Breaking ball off the inside, ball one. Fastball swung on, driven into center field. Lord's going back, still going back. He reaches down to his side and makes a nice play. Didn't square around. <laughs> and Tevin Lord's showing off the athleticism there as he was going back and almost a little bit to his left, then reached forward with the glove on his left hand and made the grab away from his midsection to his left. He made that look easy. That was not easy. Two away. Here is Montez. A left-handed batter. He is singled, takes a ball down and away. He's also struck out twice and walked. Well, the Wolverines have had, if by my count, 11 base runners tonight. And I think only poss no more than three of them have reached second base. That's just by my glancing at my scorecard. There's a swing and a drive deep to right center field. That one's way back there. That is going to one-hop the wall. Lords plays the carom, digging around second, heading for third. And in there with a triple is Montez standing up a two-out triple. And there's a man at third base here in the ninth. That ball was hammered. It did stay in the ballpark. It would have one-hopped near the 388 marker. The markers have mysteriously disappeared from the outfield walls as of a couple years ago here at UCCU Ballpark. But I know it's 388 to right. So here is Smith. Curveball in there for a called strike on the inside corner. Ryan, have we ever checked your your house, your bedroom walls, did you possibly? You know, this might be a surprise, Jordan, but I, I don't really have much of a of a uh, 
need or, or desire or want <laughs> to have the uh, the markers for how many feet it is from home plate to the wall. Some home decorating um, tips. You know, I, I, I you know I, I don't you know I'll I'll keep the UVU flag I have up in my office. How about that? All right. One uh, ball misses down low. The one one pitch. A breaking ball misses down low again. Two and one now to Smith. He singled in the first two runs of the ball game way back in the first inning. A three-run Cougar first inning, followed by two in the sixth. And that's been it for for uh, Washington State. Man at third here in the ninth. Two outs, the 2-1 pitch. Down and away missed with a breaking ball, three and one. Well, I guess the next suspect is James Warnick. I'll have to question him the next time we see him. Have we, uh, I don't know. Like, it's interesting to me because... Usually you would think those would be so, that'd be something that would just stay up or, <laughs> or something like that. But three ones fouled back, know, three and two. I, I don't know if they I don't know if they came off like during the summertime. I, I mean I really I really don't know. It, really, like, it is bizarre. They're all gone. It, it, all of the markers letting you know how deep it is to what part of the ballpark. They're just gone. They're not <laughs> they're not on the walls. They've been gone for a year or two, and they've. Just disappeared. 3-2, swung on, grounded to Polson at first. He will step on the bag for the third out of the inning. A nice job by Triplett to keep the Wolverines close. They trail 5-3 as we head to the last of the ninth. It'll be Lords, Broussard, and Morales. 9-1-2 and two, due up for Utah Valley. I love this view. I love that every time this commercial airs, I get to drink another Mountain Dew. UCCU is both a credit union and a full-service mortgage company. Which means that UCCU always provides the lowest rates and lower insurance premiums than other lenders. When your mortgage rate and insurance premium are lower, your monthly payment is also lower. It's just science. That's more money you can put into your home. Or back into your pocket. So if you're thinking about buying or refinancing a home, talk to us. The credit union that's been putting people over profits for over 60 years. It's what I do. It's what I do. It's what we do. Let me tell you something, Mean Gene. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to leave it all on the mat because that's what I do when I get it done so I can do it. Yeah! I'm on a new level. I'm on a new level. Give your head a Mountain Dew kickstart. New pitcher on for Washington State, number 27, Michael Newstrom will take over. He's 2-0 and on the year with a 3.24 ERA, making his 15th appearance. He's only thrown eight and a third innings, allowed six hits, four runs, three earned, seven walks, and nine strikeouts. So this will be interesting to see Tavin Lords to stand in and lead it off for the Wolverines, Jordan. And right now the Wolverines looking to get a couple of base runners here to see if they can make this one interesting here in the bottom of the ninth. Lords a lefty, so lefty versus lefty here. The pitch to Lords. He shows bunt, ball misses down and away. And it's 1-0 and to Lords. Lords coming into the ballgame was 0-5 versus lefties this season. He remains 0-5 by my count. Lords did triple back in the second. That was off a righty haft. 5-3. to three. The Wolverines need a base runner. So good thinking by Lords perhaps to bunt. Although Smith now in on the grass at third. He shows bunt and he popped it up. First base side. It'll be Manzardo. He has it. And there is one away. So, Lord's unable to get the bunt down, and that's an easy out. So, here's Broussard, one out, and the base is empty. This is where it gets interesting because you look at this Utah Valley lineup. That was the only left-handed hitter, and so now we're going to see it looks like another pitching change, and they may be going down to a righty uh, here, Jordan, and playing a little matchup. This is where you don't see this anymore, and they will make the change in Major League Baseball anyway. You have to pitch to at least three batters, so now Washington State's going to make a change. Interesting to go there with the uh, with the lefty versus lefty matchup, and now right here some good situational baseball from Brian Green, as we'll see here the new right-handed pitcher I'm assuming it looks like it will be number six coming in right here that's, and that's Owen Leonard I believe 
Leonard 0-1 on the year with a 4.50 ERA, making his sixth appearance. Four innings, three hits, three runs, two earned, five walks, and six strikeouts for the right-hander. And, and Jordan, this is kind of where if you can try to get something going here and you try to get a couple of runners on base, you get into that middle part of the lineup, you're only trailing by two. This is why that run in the bottom of the eighth inning is so big because if you can get Broussard or Morales on, these are two of your more typically in a, in a good year. These are your kind of your higher percentage guys to find a way to get on base. But then you get into Marco and Polson and Aarons. And Jordan, this is, could be a, one of those situations where Utah Valley, if they could find a way to get a get something going here, it could put a lot of pressure on Washington State right here. And this is a game, if you're Brian Green and you're the Cougars, um, that you really want to try to make sure you win going into the uh, start of the series with Utah um, right here. So this is a big uh, couple of outs here for Washington State, but for Utah Valley, a chance to rally. This is, a, again, a big couple of batters and outs for the Wolverines. Yeah, as Leonard takes his warm-up tosses, Broussard is only 3 for 21 this season against lefties. So it is interesting that Brian Green thought, you know what, I'm still going to go with the right-hander from the bullpen as Leonard takes his warm-up tosses. Although, you know, Newstrom is really one of Washington State's studs, so perhaps Green just didn't want to use him uh, for more than one batter if possible. Leonard has a four-pitch mix, according to the scouting report. He has that fastball, curveball, slider change. So we'll see what he really l relies on here facing Broussard, as you mentioned, and then Morales on deck. One out, base is empty. Five to three, Washington State leads the Wolverines here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Broussard has two singles tonight. So good news for Garrett Broussard. His bat hopefully starting to warm up if you're a Utah Valley fan. He came into the ballgame batting just 194. Just needs to get on base here to get the tying run to the plate. The second baseman for Washington State, Russell, playing up the middle. The pitch, a swing and a slow dribbler in between first and the pitcher's mound. It's picked up, gloved by Leonard. He tosses to first base, and Broussard is retired on one pitch, and the Wolverines are down to their final out. So Broussard just did not hit that one well, but kept it, unfortunately, in fair territory. A nice play by Leonard coming off the mound to his left to make the play. So it's up to Morales to get on for Marco. Morales tonight, 0 for 3 with a walk. He is due. From the windup, Leonard comes home. Fastball, down low, ball one. Leonard out of Seattle, Washington. Now he unleashes one to the backstop. A fastball, and it is two balls and no strikes. The infield playing deep out like more than two or three steps onto the outfield grass, the middle infield that is. 2-0 pitch, Morales takes a fastball. That one catches the outside corner at the belt. Strike one. Well, stick around, fans. After the ball game, we'll have our post-play commentary. Ryan Pickens and me, Jordan Bianucci, with you. The 2-1 pitch, Morales takes way outside, and it's 3-1. and 5-3 Cougars, bottom of the ninth. Nobody on for Utah Valley. So we'll see if Morales gets something good to hit. If it's not something right down the middle, he may just take it. 3-1 pitch. Way up high, an easy take. And Meyer comes out to, has to come way out of his crouch to get that one and then falls over. Some wild pitches there from Owen Leonard, and that brings the tying run to the plate. So that's a huge mistake from Leonard walking. Morales, his run means nothing to get to Marco, who does have the capability of hitting one out of the ballpark. McKeon may be a step in front of the warning track in left field. 
everybody very deep. And now, coming out to have a word with the home plate umpire, Dax Upton. I don't. That's not Brian Green. I believe that's the pitching coach, Anthony Claggett. And they're going to take a look, I think, perhaps an injury from the lefty, Leonard. They're going to have the trainer come out. This will be kind of interesting to see, Jordan, because kind of like one thing you, you think about, you have to remember in college baseball now, you have the, the mound visits and that. And so one of the things you might see is you might see a coach check with the home plate umpire to make sure, hey, I want to go out there for an injury visit so that way it doesn't get counted as an official mound visit. Just in case this one gets interesting, I think you're only allowed six. Yeah. And that's combined between the coaches and also the catcher also, yeah. and really any defensive meeting even, even if like a shortstop comes in. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of something to keep in mind here as we get into the later innings. So that's why you might see the pitching coach check with the home plate umpire before coming out to say, hey, this is a kind of an injury situation. I'm not just making a regular mound visit. Yeah, they leave Owen Leonard in. So here is Marco, the tying run. First one down and away in the turf, ball one. So all of a sudden... Leonard having a tough time finding the strike zone, and he's not close to it. There is someone up in the Washington State bullpen. Can't quite see who it is. Marco represents the tying run, 5-3. to three, The Cougars leading here in the ninth. Morales at first, a short lead. The 1-0 pitch, way outside, ball two. And Polson is on deck. If Marco reaches, he would represent the winning run. Yeah, Will Sierra, the redshirt junior, is the right-hander throwing in the Washington State bullpen. Marco on the season, three homers, 12 RBIs. The pitch to him. He takes outside. Again, not close, 3-0, and and he'll be taking all the way here, you would think. I just I don't know if I'm Washington State if I want to face Cade Polson right now with runners on at first and second. I understand tonight, you know, he hasn't had the best night, but he had a pretty good series against GCU. We'll, we'll see. Owen Leonard can't throw a strike right now. Three and zero. Oh. Let's see if he can pour one in. And it is right down the middle, strike one. I'm not sure where Marco thought that missed. He thought it was ball four, but that looked pretty good. Three and one the count. So Marco can lay and wait here. If it's a good one, he may just try to end the ball game with one swing of the bat. A big hole on that right side. Russell stationed up the middle at second. The 3-1 pitch. Down and away. He walked him. Again, not particularly close. And i got to be honest, I'll be shocked if they stick with Leonard here. He can't throw a strike, and here comes Claggett. They're going to go to the bullpen. The winning run is going to come to the plate here in the bottom of the ninth. Just unbelievable. Two outs. And Wazoo has issued two consecutive walks. And they'll so, make the move. They just yeah. made the move down to the bullpen. So, And this has to be tough on a pitching staff, uh, Jordan. And uh, We'll go ahead. We'll, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll get the numbers here on the new pitcher here on the WAC Digital Network. Right next to UVU, Wolverine Crossing is a premier award-winning student property in Orem. With nearly $5 million in renovations, Wolverine Crossing has the look and feel of luxury living, including contemporary upgrades and top-tier amenities. Wolverine Crossing supports a strong academic environment, whether you're on campus or online, and the resident assistant program is nationally recognized, keeping you safe and secure. Lease right now and get $200 off your first month's rent. Wolverine Crossing, this is home. At Murdoch Hyundai, the model year in sales event starts now. The open road to adventure begins at Murdoch Hyundai. Visit Murdoch Hyundai today and get 0% interest for six years on a new 2020 Santa Fe or Sonata. You walk through our doors, you feel like family. At Murdoch Hyundai in Logan, Linden, and Murray. At Intermountain Healthcare, we understand that broken arms haven't stopped. Babies continue to be born. Emergencies continue to happen. And doctor visits are still needed. At Intermountain Healthcare, we've put the measures in place to safely care for you in these difficult times. So please, don't put off the care you need, especially for stroke-like symptoms, chest pain, difficulty breathing, or other urgent care. We're here for you. Visit IntermountainHealthcare.org slash here for you to learn how to get the care you need. 
Winter has arrived, and with it, the Murdoch All-Wheel Drive event. Be prepared for any Utah winter roads. Visit Murdoch Hyundai today and get 0% interest for five years on a new Tucson. When you walk through our doors, you feel like family. At Murdoch Hyundai in Logan, Linden, and Murray. At UCCU, we do mortgages fast. Seriously fast. Just use your phone or computer to fill out UCCU's super easy mortgage application. And buying or refinancing a home has never been this easy. Seriously fast and super easy. Washington State will make a pitching change here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Will Sierra, the right-hander, will come in out of Montreal, Canada, and he will throw here for the Cougars on the year. He is he's 2-1 and one with a 6.35 ERA, making his 10th appearance, has two starts on the year, gone 17 innings, nine walks, 24 strikeouts, opponents hitting 246. He'll get Cade Polson here uh, in the ninth inning. And Cade Polson coming off a good weekend, so this should be um, a pretty good at-bat and a, a nice situation for the Wolverines. Wolverines have the winning run at first. Morales is at second. They trail 5-3 to three in the ninth. Two outs. Here's the pitch to Polson. Slider misses outside, ball one. Fastball slider changeup guy is Sierra. Missed with that one as he peers into the dugout, gets the sign in there, checks the wristband, and now we'll... Get the sign from Meyer. Polson, hitless tonight. He reached on an error back in the eighth. The 1-0 pitch to him. A swing and a high pop-up. Foul territory, Smith giving chase near the sidewall. He will give way to the left fielder, McKeon, and he makes the grab, and the ball game is over. So a pop-up in foul territory just stays in play, and that's the way it ends the way it ends for Utah Valley. They strand the winning run on base. The Cougars escape here in Orem with a 5-3 to three victory. We will take a break here as that's the ball game on GoUVU.com. Come back with the final totals and our post-game show. Once again, Washington State beats Utah Valley 5-3. to three. We'll be back after this. We love the new apartment. The natural light is amazing. Hardwood floors. There is a bit of a clogging problem. At least Geico makes it easy to bundle our renters and car insurance. Yeah, helping us save even more. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Make some noise!
Welcome back to doTERRA Field at UCCU Ballpark. I'm Jordan Bianucci alongside Ryan Pickens. Utah Valley falls to Washington State by a final of 5-3 to three tonight. And, Ryan, the Wolverines, it was a close ball game. But, again, m- missed opportunities was really the story, as well as dominant pinching from Washington State. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Utah Valley has some opportunities there, Jordan. If they would have just gotten that timely base hit, 10 runners left on base tonight for the Wolverines. But I think the thing that really stands out to you if you're Utah Valley, 5 for 34 with runners in scoring, or sorry, 5 for 34 total on the night. And when you look at it on the other side, Jordan, Washington State was only 6 for 31. But (laughs) the Cougars got eight walks, though. And, I mean, some of those walks came back to hurt Utah Valley, but really was timely hitting. I mean, that Kyle Manzardo two-run homer in the sixth, you take that off the board, we're tied at three. Well, I was just about, it's funny you mentioned that, I was just about to bring that up, and you know what, some will say, well, Jackson Otis made a mistake, 0-2 mistake to Manzardo, and he did, but I met, we've we've talked about this before, when you put that much pressure on a pitching staff to be almost perfect, it's really tough, that was one mistake, and it did come back to bite the Wolverines, but again, if the Wolverines can score more than five runs, they win this game. Well, here's the thing, though. I mean, too, if, if you look at the at the box score, which we have here in front of us, you, you look at this. Carson Brown, no runs. Tevin Hall, two innings, one hit, one walk, one strikeout. Jackson Otis, the one hit he gave up was the was the two-run homer. You go behind him, Blake Zeleny, one inning, no hits. Devin Smith, one inning, no hits. I mean, Utah Valley lights out, and you, and, you know, it's five or six runs. It's tough to say, well, we need five or six runs. That's a lot of runs, but in college baseball on a midweek matchup, that's not a ton of runs. Now when Washington State is p- piecemealing it the same way that Utah Valley is going to the bullpen all night, and the Wolverines, I mean, opportunities missed, but the the offense, I say this because it's the best word to use, the Wolverines' offense really was anemic. They barely got runners to second base, and and even when even in the ninth, that rally came via two walks by Leonard, who was who was just had lost his release point. He couldn't throw strikes, and the Wolverines just unable to. There were, I want to say, two or three two or three balls that were hard hit tonight from the Utah Valley bat, batting order. One came off the bat of Sims, the other off of um, Tavin Lords, but. That was about it as far as hard-hit balls went. Yeah, and it's tough. I mean, you know, it's it's a midweek game. I mean, but it was, I mean, when we started this game, it was in the low 60s and things like that. It's cooling off nice at the ballpark tonight. But, you know, it's just one of those nights if you're, if you're Utah Valley where you did, a, you did some really good things. You just unfortunately didn't do enough. And, I mean, and that's a tough message to send to, to players who are 18 to 23 who are going to make mistakes and things like that. And that's not to take away anything from, from what Utah Valley did. Because like I said, they did a lot of good things. They found ways. They had some good at-bats. They found a way to stay in the ball game, you know, the the whole way. But it's just one of those things where, you know, unfortunately, on a game like this, when the other team's playing just as well as you, it is that one pitch that can make a big difference. And, you know, Kyle Manzardo is a guy that, you know, that one pitch can make a big difference, and tonight it did. It was. There are some bright spots, as you mentioned, Ryan. The bullpen, I thought, from Utah Valley was really excellent, and you highlighted the guys that were so good. But as far as picking some players, I'm just I'm going to take the bullpen, and I I know that's not I that is not against the bylaws. I'm I'm going with the bullpen because, as you mentioned, Yoakum just didn't have it tonight to start the game. Gave up the three runs in the first inning. Went through two thirds of an inning. After that, the bullpen was nearly lights out. The bullpen made one. You could argue made one mistake, one pitch, and Manzardo hit it out of the park. The rest of the game, they were really brilliant for Utah Valley tonight. When you look at it, yeah, I mean, and it really would have nine times out of ten or eight times out of ten, you're going to come out on top with a, with pitching performances like that. But the tough thing with baseball is there's those one nights when when it just doesn't happen. But that's a really good sign if you're if you're Eric Madsen getting ready to go into a non-conference series against UTRGV, a team that can can knows how to hit and can score some runs. That's a really good sign to say, hey, you have some trusted arms. The other thing too, Jordan, when you look at it. Cole Yoakum only going two-thirds of an inning. At one time, he kind of went, okay, we're going to have to kind of piecemeal this together. 
he didn't have to throw anybody over two innings. There's a lot of guys who are going to be uh, going to be fresh this weekend where he's not where Eric Madsen's not going to have to sit there and say, okay, use this guy Wednesday so he can't throw till Saturday. He's going to have a, a pretty fresh bullpen um, going into that weekend series at UTRGV. You you went with the bullpen, great great pick. I'm gonna go uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go two different ways tonight. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take your bylaws rule, which <laughs> I'm still trying to look and see. I don't think we have player of the game oh, bylaws. I wrote them up. You just haven't reviewed them, obviously. I'll I'll be <laughs> looking for that email after the game. Um, but I'm I'm gonna go with the number nine hitter Tavin Lords mm. and Garrett Broussard That's because because we've talked about this before this year for Utah Valley if they can get the number nine hitter who for the most part this year center field maybe still trying to have some position battles you know 20 games in or so trying to kind of figure out whoever's playing the best seems to be the guy that's out there but Tavin Lord's a big RBI triple to to left field he found a way to get on base he's had some good at bats would have liked to see him maybe get that bunt down in the ninth but um, and then you turn that over to Garrett Broussard, two for four today with a walk. He was on three times. Those are the kind of things that really kind of start to add up where you want to start playing your best baseball as you go throughout the rest of the month of April into May as we get ready to get closer and closer to that whack tournament. But if you can get the number nine spot and then one spot, I mean, they had three out of the five combined hits tonight in that nine and, and one spot. You know you're going to get enough hits, Jordan, from Mitch Morales, from – Alexander Marco, Cade Polson, Jeff Aarons, but it's putting it all together. But you know those hits are going to come from those guys. They just didn't come tonight. Yeah, you hope so because these Wolverines, they, certainly it seems at times capable of, of getting the bats going, but as of late, it has been it has been tough offensively for Utah Valley. I do love that pick, though. It's a great pick. I like that bright spot. Broussard getting the bat going two for four tonight. Excellent pick. Let's take a look at the final totals for Utah Valley and Washington State. Again, Washington State with five runs on six hits, no errors. They left. How many did they leave, Ryan? I am missing. Uh, they left nine on base. They left nine. There you go. And UVU with three runs, five hits, one error. UVU left ten. So, again, just we could, uh, not to belabor the point, but uh, the Wolverines, yeah, got to get the bats going and got to get them going fast here in conference play. The winning pitcher is Haft. He was excellent in relief of Brotherton for Washington. He improves to 1-0. and Yoakum gets the loss. He falls to 0-1. And, and then Sierra comes in and gets that save, his first of the season for Washington State. The Cougars improve to 14-10 and overall. Utah Valley falls to 5-20 and overall this season. The time of the ball game was 3 hours and 5 minutes. The official attendance was 445. A good crowd out tonight and a uh, good ball game. It really turned into, we saw the first two innings, we thought, oh, this could get long and ugly here if we're seeing this many walks and, and whatnot. But it turned into a pretty good, really a, a good game between these two teams certainly better than in 2018 when it was 20 to 13 5 to 3 tonight um hope you enjoyed the broadcast we appreciate you tuning in the next broadcast tune in on gouvu.com this weekend on friday night utah valley will be down in the heart of texas as they take on utrgv friday night that's a 5 p.m first pitch mountain time 5 p.m. They have that for you on the WAC Digital Network and on GoUVU.com. Well, for my broadcast partner, Ryan Pickens, I am Jordan Bianucci bidding you adieu from UCCU Ballpark tonight where Utah Valley falls. Once again, the final score, Washington State 5, Utah Valley 3.